Miami Hurricanes under three-year veteran coach Butch Davis have yet to win a Big East matchup this season. Today, the Canes face Big East rival Boston College in hopes of also snapping a four-game skid last season at the Orange Bowl. Miami proved victorious as Darrell McMillan and Edron James combined for 266 yards on the ground. This afternoon, we're in Boston, and Edron James will need another big rushing game as the Canes get set to pound it out with the Eagles of Boston College. From Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, Sports Channel presents Miami Hurricanes football. Tonight, the Hurricanes battle Big East Bowl, Boston College. Hello, everybody. I'm Phil Shane, along with John Congemi. Glad you could join us today. When you take a look at the records of these two teams, three wins combined. And now, while Boston colleges might have had their share of ups and downs over the last decade, for Miami, a strange situation. If Miami started water polo today, Phil, they would not be 0-3 in the Big East Conference. Well, that's where they are today in the 97th season. Really have to dig themselves out of a hole and have to run a streak of five straight victories to even qualify for a bowl game. But it all starts today at Chestnut Hill. Very important matchup, and when you take a look at the series record, as we will a little bit later, positive signs, especially when you look back to last year. Well, two guys really came to the forefront last, se last season again in the BC game. Scott Covington had a career day. He replaced Ryan Clement at quarterback and did a terrific job in his first collegiate start. He threw three touchdown passes and led the Canes to a 43-26 victory over BC, but did a great job in moving the pocket, and another guy emerged in that game. That's Edron James. He had a terrific day last year with 123 yards on the ground. He'll need another big day. You see his career uh, stats, 5.3 yards he averages, and he does it in big chunks. He does it with speed and power. He's got great size for a running back and can hit the holes with authority. Now, you want to talk about 100-yard games. This guy has a lot of them. He has four 100-yard games, and only four players in the history have five. And one guy, Otis Anderson, he has 13. Well, he's got a lot of time. He's only a sophomore to get that record, but he does a great job. They'll need him big today against BC. Now, as you mentioned, this is a guy that can bring speed and power. And when he does get into those short yarded situations, one of the guys he's going to be running up against is nose tackle Chris Hoven, one of the best in the Big East. The guy who's really going to have to worry about him today, though, John, might be Ryan Clement. Yeah, Ryan Clement's been beaten up this season uh, for the Canes. But up front, offensively, they have to stop Honan. Last week against Virginia Tech, he had 13 total tackles. Also, couple that with three sacks. He can get in the quarterback's face. And it's up to the center and the two guards for Miami. You see Ty Wise and Wainer and Kai Hayes. They need to do a great job, not triple team him as we would see in the monitor, but at least get two guys on him and contain the middle of the field for Miami. Now when we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff, but the one thing we want to find out first before we get there is what does Miami have to do to get their second win? Well, the offensive line has to have a big day. They have to dominate and run the football. Everything's predicated for Miami on the run. That has to be successful today. Keep Brian Clement healthy would probably also help. Bill Shane, John Congemi will have the game when we come back. It's a Big East matchup with Boston College hosting the University of Miami, and it comes your way next on Sports Channel Florida. <laughs> of Miami taking on the Eagles of BC. Phil Shane, John Congemi with you, and as you take a look at the series, this is one that has overwhelmingly gone in favor of the Canes, John. Yeah, the Canes dominate 15-3 to in their last meeting. We talked about in the open, the Orange Bowl, 43-26, Scott Covington led his team, his Miami team, when Ryan Clement was injured, came in and did a great job last year. Conditions here a little bit better than you might have expected at the beginning of the day. In fact, and you woke up probably closer to 40 degrees than 60, but it looks like it might even get warmer before this one is over. And the artificial turf, a good surface, unless, of course, you're playing. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> unless you're on top of it with another 300-pounder on you. Just moments away from the opening kick, you can see the winds. And you can see the leaves. It is a gorgeous day here in New England. Miami electing to receive as we start the first half of play. Jeff Popovich and Trent Jones are both back deep. The Canes will be going from the right to the left here in the first half. They're getting set to kick the ball off. Specialist Terry Hannafin. Hannafin doing most of the kickoffs. John Maddich will be called in to kick the extra points and field goals if there are any. 
You have to, whatever win there may be, Miami will be going against it in the first quarter. Look for that running game early to try to set a precedence and try to dominate the line of scrimmage. Miami really needs to dictate what they want to do offensively. They haven't done it in their in the last four ball games. Jones getting the bulk of the kickoff returns, averaging 22 yards a pop. He's standing to the right as Hannafin gets set to kick. And we are underway. It's a short kick. Don't know if it was intentional, but popping down near the 21. And it is caught and carried out of bounds. The Canes will be starting out at their own 24-yard line. Good look at Dennis Dalton coming down with it. So first and 10 for the Hurricanes at the 24-yard line. Canes have had their success against first-year coaches in the past. Pittsburgh changed that. Ryan Clement, the quarterback today, he has had his problems, especially with interceptions. A little bit of jumping across the defensive line. The handoff in the backfield, carrying it up and across the 30 edger in James. And as we talked about, he will be the man to watch today. James, just one of the skilled players that Ryan Clement will be looking for some help on. Wayne. Franks and Jones could get some help from Santana Moss before this day is over, but Carlo Joseph and Edron James should get the bulk of the work. Yeah, they will on the offensive line. Also, Blaze, Cajayas, Wainer, Wise, and Robert Sampson gets the start at left tackle. Talked about the middle of that line, having their work cut out for him with Chris Holvin going across. Here's Moss moving from the left to the right. Taps Clement in the backside as he's in motion. The handoff to James again. Breaks a tackle at the 35, the 40. He breaks another tackle. 30, 20, 10. One man can beat him. Knocked down at the one. They'll say he's in. Touchdown, Miami. Just a terrific run that time by number five, the sophomore, Edron James going off left tackle, bobbing and weaving his way through the line of scrimmage, and he goes the distance for the Canes. Looks like Shalom Tolfrey might have gotten a finger to him at the five, tripped him up, but not enough. And Edgerin James, a huge run, two plays, and he covers 76 yards all by himself. Edgerin did it the first two plays off, off left tackle, but does a great job of showing patience. The Miami offensive line, a great job. Ty Wise does a good job. Also, the fullback, number 40, Carlo Joseph. The extra point is good, or George Gaitan makes it 7 0. The Canes with the early lead, just two plays into this one. The University of Miami, 7, Boston College, nothing. The Eagles will get it when we come back. Less than a minute gone at Chestnut Hill. Way to start out this one, the Hurricanes not wasting any time, and Edger and James, the man with a mission. Boy, what a terrific job he did getting off the line of scrimmage. Take a look up front, though, the blocking, number 40. Carlo Joseph, the fullback, he follows him through the hole. Ty Wise doing a great job at the point of attack. Now it's all speed and determination. We talked about him having size and speed. Just a terrific back. Watch the balance he shows at the five-yard line, just getting his body into the end zone. Another angle from the defensive end. Just a great kick-out block by the fullback. You see him just taking that linebacker, Brooke, healed and doing a great job of opening the hole. Edron James, all he has to do is run the football. He bobs and weaves a little bit, then makes a great move on the defensive back. Does a great job on number 10, Pat Pelt, the sophomore defensive back for BC. Now it's just a foot race. Edron James wins that race. One play already, or one player already making a mark. Robert Sampson put in as a starting left tackle, just pancaked his man along with Wise. Here's the kickoff going deep, and it is caught by Boston College. Jermaine Walker getting only to the 15-yard line before he is taken down. Walker, the leading kickoff returner for Boston College, but he did not have the same success the Canes did. It'll be a first down and 10 at the 15. Great job on special teams that time. The University of Miami freshman cornerback Leonard Myers out of Dillard High School does a nice job coming up and making a special teams play. Good look at Matt Hasselbeck. Younger brother also plays on the team. In fact, his backup, thinking about interception, same story plaguing the BC offense. Hasselback making the handoff to Walker, rolling to the near side. It is caught with space in front and out across the 30-yard line. Boston College will end up picking up a nice chunk of yardage early on. Take a look. The man who caught it, Todd Pollock, the tight end. Mike Wazo, Walker, Hemmert, and Harding will also be receiving much of the attention from Hasselback. Miles Brzezinski, Woody, Mitchum, and LaRose from left to right. 
high formation. Both wideouts to the left. Hasselbeck. And off again. Walker across the 30. He breaks free at the 40 to the 50, the 45, and hanging all over him. Nate Brooks and finally bringing him down at the 37 yard line. Well, Phil, these two teams are not known for putting points on the scoreboard this year in 97, but right away, two big plays, one by Edron James for Miami. Now Amari Walker comes back, a huge hole up the middle of the Miami Hurricane defensive front. Now Nate Brooks, he tries to hold on for dear life. There's a stiff arm by Omari Walker. He grabs onto his back and just corrals him down, but not until a huge gain for the Eagles. Mike Cloud's actually the second leading rusher in the Big East as he filled in for Walker when he was hurt. But now that Omari Walker is healthy, Cloud to the backfield or to the backup position, and you can see why. Again, they'll hand off to Walker, cutting inside. And he'll get across the 35 down to about the 34-yard line against the Canes defense. Ham, Lewis, Pegues, and Fortney. And Fortney's a question as to how much he will be able to play today with a banged up knee. Same story for Rod Mack, who is out of the starting lineup as Jeff Taylor slides over to take his place in the middle. Brooks, you already saw him saving a touchdown early on. Ridgely, Scott, and Starks will be trying to shut down the BC passing attack. And off Walker, 35 to the 30, breaking free to the 25. It's a first down for Boston College. Great offensive line play early in this game by both sides of the ball. You know, it might, might be a tough adjustment for Jeffrey Taylor at that middle linebacker position. You see Michael Smith there, 59, going outside, but the offensive line does a great job. Could be a tough adjustment for Taylor in the middle. He's used to roaming around on the outside and running, not taking on blocks, so that could be difficult. Could be a lot of success for BC running the football between the tackles. Walker inching up that yard as we go. Single back behind Hasselbeck. In motion, Harding from left to right. The handoff to Walker across the 25 and not get much more. Hard tackle. Looks like Jeff Taylor popped through the gap. Yeah, Jeff Taylor along with Chad Pegues coming from that tackle position. Goes down the line of scrimmage, delivers a good hit on Amori Walker. Good Taylor's going to have to come up build, uh, big today, Phil, just because of the depth problem at linebacker. You already have Dan Morgan, the true freshman, starting at weak side linebacker, so he's going to have to play big in that middle of the field for the Kings. And off Walker again, a one-man wrecking crew, and he is brought down again. It is Taylor again, and Denny Fortney getting up a little slowly as he came across from that left-end position. Yeah, Denny's hurting a little bit. His uh, left knee seems to be giving him trouble, but nice speed out of the middle linebacker position. That time by number 58, Jeffrey Taylor. That's where he's an asset. He can run from sideline to sideline, maybe a better, doing a better job in the middle than Rod Mack just because Rod's hurt with an injury. He can run around and roam around, use his speed to his advantage. Shotgun formation, you can see the knee brace heavy and bulky on the left knee of Fortney, but giving it a go here today. Third down, long pass to the middle through the arms of the tight end who caught the pass to start this drive. Boston College will be stymied as Todd Pollock could not come down with it. It's a fourth down and about long seven at the 23-yard line. Field goal time, perhaps. Yeah, Matt Hasselbeck, he'll look at that uh, play on film tomorrow. He'll want to hold that football maybe a half second longer, let his tight end clear the linebackers. That might have been an easy pitch and catch for a touchdown. Hasselbeck will stay in and hold, so always a chance for trickery, but not likely here. John Matlich coming in to take the field goal attempt. It'll be 40 yards, maybe 41, just outside the 30. The snap good, the placement good, and the kick sails straight through the uprights. Boston College on the board. Both teams able to score their first time out, but perhaps now the University of Miami with a chance to showcase Edron James again. It's 7-3, four minutes gone in the first. 7-3, Canes have the lead. Edgerin James scoring the touchdown and a field goal for Boston College as both teams on the board the first time out. Sports Channel's Sunday morning playbook giving you over three hours of exciting NFL pregame action. Kickoff begins at 8.30 a.m. with Bucks Magazine. You can tackle the NFL Florida style exclusively on Sports Channel. Good look at the head coach of Boston College, Tom O'Brien, in his first year. Taking over for <clears throat> relatively long-time mentor Dan Henning. Yeah, and takes over in a tough position with the scandal last season with the betting and 
he, he brings a lot of credibility and, and a great wealth of knowledge from Virginia. He recruited me when I was in high school at St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale when he was an assistant at Virginia. Just a, a great coach and a great person. You see a little bit of trickery right there, perhaps even reading the way that the Boston College special teams lined up, but Jones and Popovich in a line. Now Jones splitting off towards the left side is getting set to kick it off. Terry Hannafin, last one only went to about the 25-yard line. This one a little bit deeper. Popovich will lay off, and Jones grabs it at around the 12, has a hole at the 20, tripped up at the 30, and knocked down at the 32-yard line. But a good return for Trent Jones in good field position to start out their second drive for the Canes. Yeah, Trent does a nice job. Hasn't been a big contributor on the offensive side as much as you would think, but he adds that spark on special teams. He's always a threat to take it to distance. That time, a nice positive return out to the 31-yard line. Good look at Scott Covington in the distance. <clears throat> good chance we might see him before today is over, John, the way he performed last year in place of an, ir uh, of an injured Ryan Clement. Clement in there now, though, hasn't had the chance to throw the ball. Eye formation, and again, it's James at the tailback position. He'll get hold, and across the 30, one man to beat, gets to the sideline at the 40-yard line, and finally knocked out of play, Markel Blunt finally pushing him away. Great downfield block by number 48, Santana Moss. At the point of attack, Miami doing a good job of getting big man on big man up front, but outside, a nice job by the wide receiver. Boston College, we talked about Chris Hoven being the man in the middle, and yes, indeed, Willits and Krause also keep an eye on them. Stores, Newman, Heald, and Blunt. Blunt in on the tackle last time. You never know when they're going to be blitzing. Tollfree almost tripped up James on that touchdown run, but could not bring him down in time. In motion, Joseph towards the right. Flip to the near side. James has it to the 42, to the 50, across midfield, and out of play, close to a first down for the Canes. One of the officials is down. Yeah, he's down, and he looks like he's uh, he got hit pretty hard on that sideline. The, the, line the near judge. side line judge, right. Looked like he might have tried to avoid James going out. Yeah, it looked like James was going to cut it inside. He takes it to the outside. It looks like he might just get leg whipped here. Right here, the, the block on the outside by Sampson, actually blocking the BC player right into the back. He's up and walking around a little bit. Looked like Adam Newman, 88, goes into his legs, but it looks like he's up and walking around. Let's hope he's okay. One thing you don't expect as a player, let alone as an official. And obviously, the artificial turf made it a nice little He should warm go ahead and homecoming. take that flag out and, and call a clip on somebody. He got hammered from behind. But again, you talked about the downfield block. What about Robert Sampson? Young sophomore stepped into the starting lineup here again today, and uh, he was downfield pushing. Well, that's something Miami hasn't had in the last couple of weeks, an aggressive and attacking style on the offensive line. They need to attack. If you're on offense, sometimes you get to be a little bit passive if you don't have a lot of success. They're playing a team that they really should be today in Boston College, and they need to do that. They've done it coming out. They've started aggressive uh, running the football, and they're continuing to do that. That's where you get to be a good, aggressive team. Some say Sampson might actually be the best lineman they have, just lacking a little bit of experience, and he's working on that here today. Lined up again at left tackle, tight end to the left. And again, without Chris Jones, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but Daniel Franks is in. Handoff. James, it's been a one-man show, but this time a burst through the middle and no problem for Boston College as Krause brings him down in the backfield. They'll actually lose yardage there. Yeah, not a good play for the University of Miami that time. Pushed in the backfield. Number 74, Doug Brzezinski did a nice job of pushing Carlos Cajayas. Take a look at the middle of your football screen. You'll see Cajayas go right back into the ball carrier. And 47 did a great job. Andrew Krause from that defensive end position. Third down, they need to get to the Boston College 48 and beyond. Clement, his first pass of the day, looking for Moss, tucks it down, gets across the 45-yard line. He does it by himself. Good decision that time by Ryan Clement. Just tucks the football, knowing it was third and short. He could get it on his own. He is waiting for Santana Moss to break in his outside route. Felt a little pressure, tucks the football underneath his shoulders and gets a nice first down for the Canes. He's been getting pressured all year, Phil, in the middle of that pocket. This time he goes and steps up, tries to buy a little time, and does the smart thing. He decided he was going to tuck it and run, just make sure he gets the first down, and Ryan does a good job. Wideouts left and right. It is Wayne to the left. The handoff instead to James. He'll burst his way up across the 40 in a pickup of close to five. That's what makes James so dangerous. This is a guy who can end up sprinting down the flank, as we saw in his second carry, and then 
pounding up the middle to get close to a first. Yeah, and enjoy watching him because he's only a sophomore and he's only going to get bigger and better. He does a great job. Usually not one person brings him down. You have to gang tackle, tackle Edron James. Already he's got 89 yards and a touchdown with only five carries. Here's side Jones, far side. It is Wayne, but the flags come down. Offside. Boston College, even before the snap comes up, will give Miami a third down and very short. This could be a great passing situation for Ryan Clement. Yeah, it really can. Puts Miami in a good situation. The offensively, the last couple of weeks, they've struggled because they've been in third and long, and on third down, they, they're really only averaging 29% conversions. John Smith, the man in the middle. It is second down and just a few inches to go for Clement. Again, Jones to the left. Top of the screen is Reggie Wayne and tight end in motion, Fulcher. Handoff to James trying to get to the near side. Does cut across the 35 and down to 30. It will be a pickup of close to five. And another first down for the Canes as they grind their way towards the BC goal line. Yeah, that was all individual effort. That time, BC wins the battle at the line of scrimmage. You see Heald, number 59, the linebacker. He comes through with the tackle, but BC really did a good job up front. Take a look at the left side of the Miami offensive line. Not getting it done, but Speed, an ally of number five, Edron James, he cuts it inside and picks up the enough, enough yardage for the first down. Left and right again, it's Jones and Wayne. Fulcher flanked off to the right. Single setback, it's James. Why not go with the horse that got him here? Oh, man, nice follow with the block as he waits his time. Gets across the 25-yard line, five yards at a clip. Well, that's one of the things that James has is the quality of patience and still moving north and south and going up the football field. Take a look. He'll sidestep a little bit, try to duck behind Cajas, number 72, and then break with power to the outside. And he's able to get really six, close to seven yards with, with no hole to run, no room to run. Ryan Clement has yet to really be tested. Only pass he was forced to throw was a little dump pass to Edgerin James. <laughs> Everything else has been number five by himself. Eye formation behind Clement. And off James again. Follows his block to the inside. That's Carlo Joseph. Tripped up at around the 19-yard line. Brought down there by Pedro Serino, but very close. And in fact, it will be another first down for UM. Do you think Miami will run anywhere else but off the left side today? They're doing a great job on the short side of the field. They've got the ball in the left hash, and they're really going behind their horses. Robert Sampson, number 76, and Ty Wise. Take a look right here. Nice job by the center. Mike Wayner doing a good job getting leverage out front. Now it's all Edron James up front. A nice block by the freshman wide receiver Reggie Wayne downfield as well. Daryl Jones out, Santana Moss in. This could be Carlo Joseph territory. <clears throat> Everything has been to the UM tailback number five, Edger and James. Instead, Clement drops, throws near side, has Wayne caught at the 15, steps out of bounds at the nine. Close to another first down for the Canes. Yeah, that freshman wide receiver right now is Ryan Clement's favorite target. He has 25 catches on the season, and his average is 13.3, so he does a great job on the outside for a young receiver. Just runs a hitch pattern. The DB for Boston College falls down and gets a lot, lot more yards than really he should have gotten. Second down and short. Joseph will come to the sideline, and it's a double tight end formation with both Fulcher and Franks. Wideouts left and right. Moss will stay in there to the bottom of the screen. Edger James, the lone man in the backfield. The handoff following the double tight end. Flag is down behind the play. Breaks a tackle, gets the first and down to the seven. But this one in the territory of holding, and it might come back. Yeah, they're going to get a holding, and it looks like on the center, number 68, Mike Wayner. He was beaten off the line of scrimmage and held, held a BC defensive uh, lineman from behind. Good look at James. Franks looks like he might have been caught in the tussle that time getting up a little bit slow and limping and he will come off offense 10 yards from the spot of the foul remains second down the holding against Miami yeah take a look at the middle of your of your screen right here Ryan Clement taking the ball back to Edron James but you see the pursuit right there right from behind number 95 Chris Hoven does a nice job of beating Mike Wayner to the spot and it was just a uh, you know nothing he could do but really hold because Hovan would have made the play in the backfield. So they'll bring it back out to the 26-yard line. First passing situation of the day. Joseph back in there. 
Moss and Wayne to the top of the screen. BC might have jumped. Clement straight drop. Near side, Joseph catches it in the flat. Up to 20, stutter steps. Pulls his way down close to the 17-yard line and back close to the original line of scrimmage. Ryan goes to his favorite target, it seems like, besides Reggie Wayne on the outside. Carlo Joseph, he has two touchdowns on the season. Does a nice job coming out of the backfield. He'll catch the football and make you make you pay if you want to square up with him one on one. You see Ryan just nice decision. Both receivers go, both defenders go with the tight end. And then Carlo tries to make something happen getting upfield, but he's met by a host of BC defensive players. So it's third down and a long nine. They need to get down close to the 10 yard line of Boston College to get a first. This drive a little bit harder than the first. Makes the handoff to James. He's got him in the, the top of the screen. It's Wayne diving, catch, touchdown Miami. Oh, just a great route outside. Phil, what a great job by 87, Reggie Wayne. He is hurt, looked like he might have landed on the ball and lost his air, but back up and out and a beautiful toss for Clement. Yeah, the first touchdown to a wide receiver this year for the University of Miami goes to the freshman, number 87, Reggie Wayne. Did a great job of selling the post pattern, comes out of it, Ryan just played pitch and catch on the outside. Easy touchdown for Miami. The extra point is good and the Canes have stretched their lead. It is 14 to three Miami. The key on that play also, the setup earlier in this first quarter, everything going to Edger and James, this time the fake, and Ryan Clement spots Wayne in the end zone. Four games in a row, and what a way to break out of a slump. Best way to do it, get out early, and right now they are leading by 11. Yeah, just a nice pitch and catch on the outside. Watch the body language of Ryan Clement. We'll get it on the next on the next shot. But he does a good job of just putting some air and letting his receiver go out and get the football. He looked like he, he was one of those guys hitting a drive and it's just going down the right side. And he's going, come on, Wynn, bring it back. He did a good job of just putting it where the receiver can go and catch it. And he's got to feel a lot of pressure off of his shoulders, finally getting the ball into the end zone. And Reggie Wayne, as a freshman, I tell you what, 19-yard touchdown reception, he's growing up in a hurry. We talked about one and four, and while 19... 97 might not be going the right way for the University of Miami. The future is looking pretty bright with some of the youngsters that we're seeing here today. Yeah, he's already doing commercials. Look at 1-800-CALL-ATT. <laughs> what is this? Or he's calling Disney World. That's I don't know. right. Guy Tan getting set to kick it back. Walker, Crittenden, and Cloud. The guys to watch out for. This one to Walker right around the 8-yard line. Across the 15 to the 20 with a hole. Breaks one tackle to the 30, to the 40, close to midfield. Guy 10 pushing him. A flag comes out, finally knocked out of bounds around the 40-yard line. And the flag coming down right near where Guy 10 got a hold of him. Yeah, Jermaine Walker does a great job. The junior wide receiver from Houston, Texas, takes it up the Miami sideline. They're going to tack on another 15 for a face mask, I believe, on Guy 10. Walker averaging nearly 20 yards a return, and this one blows that away. Yeah, it looked like a lot of guys running behind each other for the University of Miami. You have to stay in your lanes on the uh, on special teams. You see the blatant face mask there by Guy Tan. Did a good job, though. You'd rather do that than give up six. Give your defense a chance to get on the field. They have marked the infraction at around the 48-yard line. Butch Davis frantically signaling signals out to his defense. Turn the run back. The 40-yard is where they will mark it. It sounds like they're talking about maybe a five-yard, and Guy Tan might have gotten away with one there. Yeah. I, I think Miami really did get away with that. That looked like a 15-yard variety, so yeah, good break for Miami's defense. It still keeps the ball on the Miami 35-yard line, but great field position for BC to operate. So it's first down and 10 for the Eagles, and they did get a field goal their first time out, but the Canes putting the pressure on. Wide out to the left and to the right. In motion, Walker towards the top of the screen. Hasselback facing the hat, taking the handoff to Walker. He's looking deep, throws to the flat, and just throws it out of bounds as the pressure finally getting to him. Hasselbeck trying to get outside. They ran this play successfully on the opening play of the game for BC. Just a little bootleg outside. But Miami looked like they didn't have anybody in the middle of the football field. Walker broke out on a corner route into coverage. If he takes it up straight up the, up the hash mark, nobody's there at free safety for Miami. Wazza at the top of the screen. And again, Walker heading towards the top. They will hand it to 
Omari Walker, he'll break free, close to a first down to the 25-yard line, might be inches short. Great play up front by BC's offensive line. Doug Brzezinski and Damian Woody, the center and left guard, 74 and 63. Take a look at the wash. They they just washed down people on the, in white jerseys. Look like Damian Lewis, the freshman nose tackle from Miami. They just, just a huge hole for Omari Walker, and he's had some great success early in this football game. That play looked like it could have went for more yardage. Looked like Jeffrey Taylor stepping into that middle linebacking role might have also got sandwiched in that wedge. They are inches short, so it will bring up a second down and inches. Hasselback holding his forefinger and thumb narrowly apart. Good situation for BC to get back in this one. Yeah, you couldn't ask for more. You know, Miami goes up 14-3 with another dominant drive right down on the BC defense. Now they get a great play for special teams. They get the ball on the 35-yard line. And now they got a great situation in sec uh, third and short to go ahead and continue this drive. Emmert and Pollock. Very tight along the line. Omario Walker steps up. Split backfield. And they'll take it themselves rather than risk a turnover. Just get the first down. Hasselback picks up two. For a quarterback in that situation, you really just want to get the, the exchange from the center and go forward because they're going to see a lot of white helmets and white jerseys in the middle of the football field. Just duck your head and run. You see Jeffrey Taylor coming up right over the center saying, I know you're coming with the quarterback sneak, and I'm going to try to stop you. But he goes, Hasselbeck does a good job getting lower than the defensive player. A little bit surprising, though, to knock off the Canes, and Boston College has had their problems playing so conservatively in a good offensive situation. Hasselbeck under center, takes the handoff. Good play action, pressured from behind. Eludes one tackle, throws it left-handed, and it is caught and brought down close to the 18-yard line. Looked like Rob Tardio, the backup, tight end, but a flag does come down. Now, Brett Favre <laughs> said before he leaves the NFL, he's going to throw a touchdown left-handed. I think Hasselbeck may have read that same article. Offside, and a creative play goes for naught. Boy, that was just a terrific improv by the quarterback, the senior, Matt Hasselbeck. He's 6'4", 219 pounds. But I didn't know he had talent from the left side of the dish as well. Watch this. Great play action. He looks like he's going to go to his tight end, but a nice job down the middle of the field. He eludes Ham, number 71. And he says, wait a minute, I can wing this thing left-handed. Pretty tight spiral for a lefty, too. Good thing they didn't see that when you were at Pitt. Oh, no. <laughs> I might have been walking off the field, believe me. So Tardio's catch goes for not. They'll bring it back to about the 29-yard line. It is still first down for BC. That's one of those plays that the coaches are going, no, 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 yes, good play. Dropping down to the near side. Mike Guazzo, top of the screen, Jermaine Walker. Looking for Walker, cutting inside, across the 25. Fumble! Loose ball, near side, Kane's looking for it. Popovich looks to pick it up, or actually... It almost ends up being Dwayne Starks, but the Canes will recover at the 29-yard line. Boy, a big play by Jermaine Walker looked like for BC, and all of a sudden the ball comes loose. Dan Morgan put great pressure from the outside. He just misses Hasselbeck. Little outside slip screen. Looks like it's going to go for a big play, and somebody gets a hand on the football. Let's see if we can take a look right there, number 25. Dennis Scott does a great job. It almost pops right in to number 23's hand, Dwayne Starks. He misses it. Number 59, Michael Smith, gets on the football for the Cane. So great field position for BC. Miami defense comes up with a nice turnover. It'll be first and 10 Canes. Canes again going to James across the 30 and pulling his way down to the 33-yard line. Again, close to five yards. But credit to Dwayne Starks, the 5'10 senior from Miami Beach High. Good look at Edrin James and what he has done today. That's the longest touch, the longest run and touchdown run of his career, one of the longest in Kane's history. Yeah, he does a great job with his explosion through the line of scrimmage. You can tell him, you can tell he's feeling his way through the BC defense today. He's really getting a good job up front by his offensive line. Running, hand off James, study step across the 35, first down Miami. By the way, the longest touchdown run. Danielle Ferguson also against Boston College. Yeah, they've had some long, big plays on the ground versus Boston College in the last couple of se uh, last couple of seasons. Today, Edron James provides his speed in the opening series. Uh, really, the offensive line it, it has to be uh, commended 
so far early in this football game. The last couple of weeks, they've taken a lot of pounding and they've taken a lot of abuse. Coming back today and doing a good job early in this football game, controlling the line of scrimmage. Offset formation. Clement looking to the middle, picks up Frank, spins away from one tackle across midfield and barrels his way down to the 47. A flag is down on the far side. This would be a first down if it's against Boston College. I think it's going to be on the defensive front of BC. It looked like they were jumping around a little bit right over the ball. And Bubba Franks comes up with a, with a nice first down for the Canes. Take a look right over the right guard. You see BC jumping around a little bit. I definitely think that's that's where they called it on the defensive end. It looked like uh, over the right guard and right tackle. That's a big target, number 88. You take a look at him. He gets his uh, playing time at 6'6", 240 pounds. He's a freshman, and he's going to be a, a big target. It could be a big guy today for the Canes. That, uh, the middle of the field's wide open. Canes with a chance to put this one away early on, and Edwin James a big reason, but this time he will get nothing wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. You are coming around, but now you got to keep your feet alive and just go get it. I mean, you know, that defensive right. front getting a, a talking to Everybody by Coach ready. Mark, doing a good job. They, Derek Ham, you take a look at him. He's done a great job of, of pressuring for a young player on the defensive side. You know, trying to give encourage him to stay after the quarterback. He already has... 13 quarterback pressures, so he's done a great job from that uh, as a junior. One man wrecking crew today. Although Reggie Wayne will get credit for one of the touchdowns. Here's a nice pass. The University of Miami pushing forward Andre King. Spinning away and a first down. He'll give the signal himself down close to the 32. Yeah, the freshman wideout from Stranahan in Fort Lauderdale does a nice job on the outside. Just a curl pattern. Comes back to the football. Ryan Clement really throwing the football effectively. He hasn't thrown it a lot. He had to tie it in over the middle. He says, hey, I'm going to push this ball down the field, get a good route on the outside. Might as well take advantage of it. He breaks a few tackles, and nice rack, nice run after catch by the, by the receiver of the Canes. King will split off towards the bottom of the screen, and it's Santana Moss. The backups are in for Ryan Clement. Moss jogging towards the line of scrimmage, and the handoff to James up the middle. He'll pick up about three that time. Just keeping him honest. Miami's had good success when they were on the left hash running to the short side of the field. And I tell you, number 40, Carlo Joseph, providing another good block up front for his tailback, Edger and James. If James looks like he's going to have to carry the load today in that Miami backfield. Good, good mix of run and pass. Miami plays better offensively when they get into that running game. It opens up that passing game for Ryan Clement. For the fifth time in his collegiate career, James over 100 yards. That's tied for second behind only Otis Anderson. This time the fake... Knocked off balance, the pass to King, he brings it down inside the 10. Three Eagles to bring him down, it's first and goal at the eight for the Hurricane. Wow, just a great play by quarterback and receiver. Ryan had to throw that ball a lot earlier than he would have liked, but Andre King goes up and makes a spectacular catch, taking the ball away from the BC defender. You take a look, Ryan Clement really is a, a, a missed block up front on the outside left tackle. And number 51, Eric Storrs comes in really untouched and then a great catch, a great leaping catch as a receiver. You want to catch that ball at its highest point. Sampson misses the block up front. And Ryan takes a pounding, but he'll take that as long as it's a completion. And off James, left side, turns the corner. Touchdown Miami. Easy as pie. It's 20 to 3 and some booze starting to come down from Chestnut Hill. We'll credit that touchdown to Ryan Clement and, and King on the play before getting him down to that situation. Nice run on the outside. You see Edrin James getting his second touchdown of the afternoon. He tried to bounce it inside the tackle. Nothing there. Comes outside, then uses his speed to the front corner of the end zone for the Hurricane score. Guy Tan coming in, looking for his third PAT of the day, and he will get it. The University of Miami riding on big back edger in James in the arm of Ryan Clement, pulling away. Nice day for Butch Davis and company. Hurricanes lead it 21 to three with a buck and a half left to go in the first. Edger and James has been a man today. 21 to three in the ground and through the air. Teaming up with Ryan Clement that time for his second touchdown of the game on the ground. Eight plays, just over three minutes. James in the end zone for the second time. This is rapidly turning into 
his best game of his collegiate career. Yeah, doing a great job following the offensive line, and Miami must think they're waking up from a bad dream of that lasted around four weeks because they haven't had this success, success uh, since the first week of the season against Baylor. Guy Tan waiting for the whistle as James catches a breather. They're going to need to import some oxygen tanks for him before this one is over, and the Canes trying to avoid that, thanks in large part to their number five, got Tan, a chip shot close to the 30. It's going to be brought down there by Adam Newman. He'll call the fair catch, and inside the 35-yard line, uh, to the 31, it'll be first down and 10 for Boston College, who are getting very close to need to time in the first quarter. Yeah, Boston College really has to answer now. Come back, they come out and really be positive on offense. They had a good job of taking over after a big special teams play, but Miami stuffs it last time with a fumble. Boston College has to answer this trip down. Hasselback. Handoff. This one's Mike Cloud coming in for Omari Walker, and you do not get much of a break when Cloud comes in. This is the second leading rusher in the Big East. And he pulls through, but stopped after a gain of three. Looked like Reggie Sutton might have gotten involved. And that time, also Dan Morgan. Yeah, Mike Cloud comes in. He already he has close to 500 yards with 494 yards and five touchdowns. He brings you a little bit more explosiveness and speed through the offensive line. High formation, wide out to the bottom of the screen. In motion towards the top is Dennis Harding. A flag comes down, and this play will never take place. Yeah, it looked like on the top of the screen uh, offensively for BC number Look like number 61, John Miles. That's something you can't do, Phil. You come out and you try to answer Miami on the scoreboard, and they're hurting themselves. Take a look at the top of your screen right there, left tackle. Number 61, Miles jumping off sides. And after a productive play on first down, now they'll take it back, and it'll be second and around 12 yards to go for the Eagles. Only two penalties so far against BC that were actually taken. Remember the one where Franks caught it, and they actually went with the reception, but BC, as you said, hurting themselves. Hasselback, handoff, Cloud still in there, breaks through, breaks a tackle at the 35, and finally tripped up. Good play by Jeffrey Taylor to finally hog time, but it will bring up a second down. Call it seven. Yeah, Jeffrey getting a little bit more action in the middle of that football field. Doing a good job at middle linebacker today, running from sideline to sideline. But there you see the speed of Mike Cloud, the running back for Boston College. Omari Mark Walker maybe gets tackled for a two-yard gain. He explodes through two tackles, two arm tackles, and gets downfield against Miami. Correction, make it third down. They need to get just shy of the 44-yard line to pick up the first. Cloud in motion towards the top of the screen. This could be a mismatch, mismatch up top. Looking across the middle for the tight end. Instead, he will end up throwing it underneath. Caught there by Derek Crittenden. Crittenden across the 40 to the 35, and that is where they will call him down. But a big first down play for Boston College as the first quarter comes to a close. BC trails it big time here after one, but what a way to head to quarter number two. There is still hope for the Eagles, but for the Hurricanes, a great way to start out this Big East matchup trying to avoid their fifth straight loss. Canes 21, BC 3 after 1. 21 to 3, Miami leads it. Phil Shane, John Congemi with you from Alumni Stadium. The campus of Boston College and the Eagles fans have been made silent for the most part here today, but here's a good chance to go into the second quarter on a roll. Well, Hasselbeck buys time. You see 44, Dan Morgan coming underneath. He gets a good bump on Crittenden. Looks in the backfield, and as he turns his head to the quarterback, Crittenden keeps going across the middle of the football field, and he did a good job of keeping the play alive. Matt Hasselbeck bought some time in that pocket, tucked the football down, and then saw his wide receiver, who's averaging 8.3 yards a catch. He gets a little bit bigger chunk of change on that one and, and moves the chains for the BC first down. Good look at Hasselbeck, but not a good thing to look at if you're a BC fan when you look at the stats, but Miami faithful, 131s, all of it credited to James and Ryan Clement, 5 for 5. Can't get much better than that. No, and, and that's why he, he's been productive because of the rushing yards. You can do that. You can pick and choose when you want to throw the football, and you don't feel like you've got to make a play. I think Ryan has been caught in a situation. They've been playing catch up a lot, and they haven't had experience on the outside. And when you're in that type of situation, you can get burned by trying to do too much. Today, he's got a great support with the running game and Edger and James, the offensive line handling themselves. He can be five for five and be very pr productive. Crittenden 
flanked to the near side, along with Harding, he's in motion. Hasselbeck fakes the handoff to Cloud, he's looking up the middle for Crittenden, near side, Harding cutting back, picked off! It's picked off at the last moment by Leonard Myers! The ball hung up in the air and actually outrunning it was Harding, but Myers right there to grab it. Yeah, the freshman cornerback out of Dillard High School, he has eight total tackles, no interceptions. He gets his first one of his collegiate career right there, number 22, being congratulated by his Miami teammates. Just a great job. The ball, as you said, Phil, hung up in the air a little too long, and he came over from the hash mark. He did a great job going up, keeping his feet in bounds. And it's another turnover for, by this Miami defense. The last time BC actually started a drive, they fumbled it. Here it's picked off. And Ryan Clement will start in the shadow of his own goal line, but with a big lead. And with Edger and James on track, things looking good for the Canes. Handoff across the 10, down to the 12. And Trent Jones getting his first carry as James will take a breather. Yeah, they're going with two new backs in the ball game. Looks like Nick Williams, number 30, he comes in at fullback. And Trent Jones will come in at tailback. We'll take another look at the interception by Leonard Myers. Hasselbeck on the right hash, trying to go outside. Looked like a good ball, but great speed by the freshman cornerback. Does a great job coming off of his coverage and picking off the ball. And he's a happy guy on the sidelines right now. No doubt about it, Williams. The handoff to Jones, fakes, near side, pass to Fulcher with some space in front of him. The big fullback rumbles across the 30 and down to the 33. First down, Miami. Now you take a look at the Miami tight end situation. Chris Jones out of the football game, and it will be lost for the rest of the season. You get Mondrell Fulcher, number 18, and Daniel Franks, number 88. Both of these guys, big targets. Fulcher goes at 6'3", 245 pounds, and Ryan does a nice job. Wanted to push the ball downfield, but nobody's underneath. He just dumps it out. It's almost like a long handoff down the sideline. He's got good speed going down the Miami sideline for a first down. More sad news for the University of Miami as Ryan Clement will not have Chris Jones to throw to. Some spinal problems and he will finish his degree though. The handoff to Jones across the 40 yard line and close to another first down. Chris Jones with that spinal problem had been experiencing some numbness in his hands. Finally got a chance to be looked at by Dr. John Uribe and the news coming down in a negative sense. He will not be able to play but they will let him fulfill his scholarship and finish his degree. And as far as the football team goes, we've seen what Franks was able to do earlier today. And Manuel Fulcher has put them close to midfield. Second down and short. In motion, it's Santana Moss to the bottom of the screen. The handoff. Jones dodges one tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Down to the 45-yard line and another first down for the Canes. You get Trent Jones there coming in for Edger and James. You get Nick Williams. You don't lose much at the fullback position. He lays a great block, providing Trent Jones to get some yardage. But you take a look at this Miami team this year. They've been hurt with injuries. And a lot of freshmen have had a play to come into the football game and really not just spot play, but play, you know, four quarters. You see 23 freshmen. You know, true freshmen are 13 of those guys. So a lot of young players with the University of Miami. This team, if they can just hold on this season, they're going to be good in years to come. Darrell Jones to the bottom of the screen, and he is open. They're throwing the ball to him at the 20. Almost caught it at the 17. A flag is down in the backfield, but Darrell Jones, you can see him just sprint away from the defense, and Ryan Clement didn't miss him by much. No, he didn't miss him by much at all, and that play is going to come back even if it was successful. It looked like holding on the Miami interior, but just a nice ball by Ryan Clement. Did a good job of putting some air under the football. You saw Ryan take what they're giving him, on the inside, this time he goes for the home run and it looked like a successful play went right through the fingertips of the freshman wide receiver. Looks like that's all gonna, it would come back anyway. Mateen, the tackle, Holding number 74. Offense, 10 yards, assessed from the spot of the foul, remains first down. And that foul was about 10 yards in the backfield, so this perhaps the first big blunder that the Canes have made. Yeah, the first time really Miami has hurt themselves offensively. They went for the home run. Uh, they were a little conservative throwing the football. That time they go down the field. Take a look at your right side of the screen. You'll see a BC defender getting run behind Ryan Clement, and it looked like that was the hold. And the catch goes, or the would-be catch goes right through the fingertips of the freshman wideout. Flip to the near side for Trent Jones. Calls the block and follows it to the inside. And across the 35 and down to the 36. That will bring them down to within nine yards of the line of scrimmage in a second down and 19. The penalty eating up 25 yards for the Canes. Well, if you're Miami on first down, that's what you want to do. Get a little bit of that penalty yards back 
and don't go for it all in one shot. Just try to get yourself in a position where you can make it a third and medium situation. Reggie Wayne, who caught the touchdown pass for the 14th point for the Canes to the bottom of the screen, and Moss and Jones to the top. A little bit of movement along the line of scrimmage, and it looked as though Eric Storrs, the B.C. linebacker, stepped close and maybe drew Miami into movement. Yeah, it looked like the left side of the offensive line for Miami moving a little bit before the ball snapped. Actually, the right side looked like right guard Carlos Cajas, number 72, a little uh, lean in his step before the ball was snapped. So Miami hurting themselves on this, on this drive. As I said, this is what Miami has done in the last couple of weeks. They've hurt themselves when they had to drive the ball 70 and 80 yards. It hasn't shown up until the last two plays in this football game. Yes, hoping for a little bit better result in his senior year, but still a chance for a bowl game. If they win them all, maybe a pretty good one. Clement to the near side, dodging the pressure, throws to the middle, almost caught by Reggie Wayne, but he might have been out of bounds anyway as he was sliding. Trent Jones that time picking up the blitz in the middle of the football field a little bit late. BC doing a good job of flushing Ryan Clement out of the pocket, trying to make something happen on the perimeter, trying to get the ball down the field to Reggie Wayne, but good job by BC that time pressuring Clement out of the pocket. That's the first incompletion of the game for Ryan Clement. In motion, Daryl Jones towards the top of the screen, so three wide out to the top, drones the lone back, Caught by Santana Moss over a diving deep BC defender, and he will run all the way across the 35 to the 34-yard line. BC struggling for the interception, but Pedro Serino finally ends up coming back. Yeah, Pedro Serino, number three, goes for the interception and gambles. He rolls the dice and loses. Santana Moss, the freshman wideout, takes it, number 48. Ryan Clement, that time throw, putting a little air on it. Serino misjudges the ball, and, and University of Miami comes up with a huge third down, huge third down conversion. You see number three in the middle of your screen. He's reading Ryan the whole time. Ryan trying to get the ball outside to pick up the first down. Just a bad timing of a jump. And Miami comes up with another big play on first down now with Trent Jones. Jones spins away from one tackle at the line of scrimmage. Finally brought down George White to the 27-yard line, make it the 28, and it'll be a second down and four. Good look at Santana Moss showing some of his skills. Yeah, having a big day already. A nice catch on third down, third and on a very long for the Canes. They convert that. Now they get into a great situation with second and a long three, or call it four. Moss in the slot, now in motion towards the top of the screen. Still Nick Williams and Trent Jones, the handoff to Trent Jones. Bites his way close to the 25-yard line. He'll be about a half a yard shy of the first down, bringing up a third and short. Looks like Miami will come in with two tight ends in the offensive line. You can't lose Mike Wainer, number 68. Looks like he's limping off to the sidelines. He's their number one center, and really an anchor in the middle of that football field. Coming on to replace him, number 53, Brian Bippen, the 6'3 junior from Midland, Texas. Timeout is called. The University of Miami realizes they can put this one in the books. If they can culminate a drive here with the score, we're going to stick around. Trent Jones has been getting much of the carries here in the second quarter. Behind James Jackson, Dal McMillan, and at the top of the list, Edron James in the Canes running back slot. But as you mentioned, some bad news on the bench for Miami. Yeah, you hate to see the offensive line take another injury. Richard Mercier was lost for the season in the opener against Baylor. Now you get Mike Weiner out, and it looks like they're taking a look at his right leg. So you hate to, hopefully it's not as serious as it looks. You see Dr. John Uribe down there with the medical staff trying to take a look at his leg, but they're going to be in trouble. Ty Wise is normally the backup center. It looks like Brian Bippen, number 53, will come in. Uh, possibly at center, or they can move Ty Wise back to center, but right now they're taking snaps on the sideline. Looks like 53 Bippen is going to take that center position. Brian Bippen and Clement right near midfield as the trainers continue to work on ailing center Wainer. You talked about Mercy, and that was one of the things that really hurt Butch Davis. 
not just injuries, but specific injuries grouped in bunches. The wide receivers who were knocked out of action and the offensive line, which was demolished. Well, clearly he was your best offensive line and talking about Richard Mercier, and he was lost for the season. Hopefully he can come back to his form next season. But in this football game, you, you, you got to applaud the Miami offensive line. They've done a great job providing running the football and establishing the run, allowing Ryan Clement to have his best performance of this season. So junior Brian Bippen steps into the middle of the fray and the whistles will blow and a flag comes out. Far side line judge couldn't remember which pocket he put it in, but it will be against the Hurricanes. Yeah, it looked like they were dejected coming to the side. Offense, five yard penalty, remains third down. I haven't heard that one, the snap infraction, possibly the center picking up the football or uh, you know, maybe doing something, flinching the football back before it snapped, but take a look at the University of Miami going to the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look, we can see the center, Brian Bippen, get down and maybe possibly move the football. Barely see the shoulder, but by that point, the line judge was already stepping up. Not a good way for Bippen to enter the fray, losing five yards, so it knocks him back to a third down, and let's call it seven. Here's oh, they got Fulcher. him. Clement, play action. Daniel Franks at the 17, and he's plowed down, finally knocked down at the 12-yard line as he kept his balance. The play action works again, and Ryan Clement is having one heck of a game. Oh, a great play offensively by Miami, but just a blown coverage by BC defensively. Horrible job on the defense. Nobody covers the tight end in short, and, and it's third down and five yards to go. The right side of your screen, Number, you see both these BC defenders go in towards the quarterback. Nobody's there for the tight end. Daniel Franks, just a huge target at 6'6". Ryan probably said, just let me get it in the range of number 88. He does, and they convert on third down. Reggie Wayne to the bottom of the screen. Santana Moss to the top. The handoff to Trent Jones following the blocks. Flag comes down in the backfield. Jones finally down to about the seven-yard line following Carlos Gaez's pulling block. And it might have even been Carlos who got whistled. Yeah, that came from the, the short side of the football field. Looked like it was a, a hold on Miami. That This is another opportunity lost. Miami gets a big third down conversion. They get it inside the 20-yard line in that scoring range. And now they're getting it, uh, looks like a, a holding call on the on, in, interior of the offensive line. Fifth penalty, 35 yards against the Canes. Let's see if we can take a look right here. Looks like Nick Williams did a great job and Kaiheas did a good job kicking out. I don't know where the hold is on that play. Either it's downfield on a receiver, but uh, it didn't look like Williams or Cajayas was holding on the play. This will bring it all the way back down to the 25-yard line. Call it a 10-yard penalty as the foul came in the backfield. So it's five penalties, 40 yards. And again, another long situation. Santana Moss, who ended up saving the Cane skin. Snaring a Ryan Clement pass at midfield. Almost easier to get a touchdown now as they need to get down to the one. And Ryan Clement didn't like what he saw in the backfield. Is some confusion for the Canes. Canes lead it 21 to 3. But they're having their problems in the middle of the second quarter. 21 to 3. The Hurricanes trying to snap their losing skid and get their first Big East win of the year. Of course, this is just the start of a busy football weekend. And Sports Channel, your home for the most exciting NFL pregame show, Florida style. Sunday morning NFL kicks off at 10 a.m. You can get the inside story on the Bucks, Finns, and Jaguars tomorrow at 10 a.m. exclusively on Sports Channel. Bill Shane, John Congemi with you from Boston as the Hurricanes looking for just their second win of the year. They are facing a first down and 24. In motion with three wide receivers to the bottom with Santana Moss. Clement trying to tuck it under. Still looking to throw it deep. Clement across the middle. And finally caught and brought down Daryl Jones at about the 13-yard line. And Ryan Clement perhaps tempting fate there. Yeah, that's the play that's been getting Ryan in trouble this year when he scrambles. Somebody either getting called for a hold or he gets sacked. That time he gets away with it and finds the freshman receiver, but he does a great job of eluding the pressure. Take a look, he wants to stay in the pocket. He decides to step up, maybe buy, buy himself a little bit more time. Look downfield, he finds a receiver down the field, and Daryl Jones, number one, does a nice job of making a good play, of making something that looked bad into a good play. Wideouts left and right in motion. Carlo Joseph, and they have him in the flat. Oh, he has popped a meeting of the number 40s. Nice catch by Joseph. 
However, bringing him down before he could get anything more, defensive back George White. But Joseph uncovered coming out of the backfield. White made sure he wouldn't pick up much more. Yeah, White puts a good stick on number 40, Carlo Joseph. George White, the sophomore DB, comes in and really does a nice job. Down the football field, number 88, Daniel Franks was open in the middle of the football field. Ryan didn't see him. Let's take a look. Yeah, hello, how you doing? <laughs> He does a good job coming in. It's third and five for Miami. Let's see if they can go to the short side of the field and work the tight end and someone in the flat. But they did pick up close to 20 on that play. So a third down and short. Clement rolling, looking. Fulcher just misses it through the arms as he pulled away from White on that play. Clement did have him open in a decent pass, but Fulcher could not hang on. Yeah, Ryan needs to put that right in his numbers. He did a good job of getting it close. I thought they'd go to the short side and use the tight ends. Does a nice job of play faking, comes out on the naked boot. He's got the tight end short right away, but elects to go in the end zone. Got to make that play. That's the play that Miami's been missing, and George White again on the coverage for BC, but you have to take advantage of your opportunities. Miami's done a good job today. That time they miss out on a, on a golden one. So BC, for the first time this year, stops Miami from scoring a touchdown, and Andy Crossland will left foot it through the uprights. The Canes still score. And they stretch their lead to a full three touchdowns. It is Miami 24 and Boston College three. The field goal attempt just shy of 25 yards and 24 to three. Canes lead it with eight and a half left to go in the first second. To three, Miami picking up their lead to 21 points with 8.15 left to go before we reach the half. Gaetan will step in to put this one back into play, and Miami, despite killing themselves with penalties twice, end up picking up 92 yards of offense, but have to settle for the 24-yard field goal off the boot of Andy Crossland. Yeah, but it's impressive. At least Miami has the ability to go 16 plays and 92 yards, something that's been eluding that offense all season long. Gaetan's boot. Caught up in the air and caught by one of the upbacks who called a fair catch inside the 20. And riding right up his back was the man who they wanted to get the hands on, and that's Jermaine Walker, who could only look on and surprise. Yeah, sometimes that's a good play. That time, that was a poor decision by the BC special teams. You don't do that on your own 15-yard line, especially when the kick was traveling down and really no one around you. So that time, not a wise decision by the BC Special teams. Let's take a look. It's just the wedge being set up, and it looks like no one's calling for the football. Nobody's within 15 yards, and that looked like a center fielder out <laughs> closing the inning. One, two, three. Scott Dragos. Probably wishing he was in a hole somewhere at the moment. Hasselbeck facing the hand, faking the handoff. Haven't seen Omari Walker for a while. The long pass up field tipped away at the last moment. Is trying to pull it down was Mike Wazo. Still in there in the backfield to start the second quarter drive for Boston College is Mike Cloud. That play was set up by number 99, Denny Fortney. They wanted to go to Todd Pollock on the naked bootleg. Short, Hasselbeck had to hold the ball. You see only two completions on five attempts for 24 yards, so they really haven't tried to push the football down the field, but credit Denny Fortney with a nice play there. Hearing the eight-minute mark of quarter number two. Both receivers to the bottom of the screen. The handoff to Cloud, showing some speed, showing some agility, dodging across the 30, being ridden down to the ground by Dwayne Starks, who might have just saved a touchdown. Well, you can tell why this Mike Cloud, number 21, he's only a junior, is in the top rushers in the Big East Conference. He's got great speed, and when he gets outside, he can really make you miss. He does a nice job of coming through the line of scrimmage. He gets it from the tailback position. Great job by the offensive line, a big hole. And then this cut right here, bang, he goes outside, makes Dan Morgan miss, and now it's a foot race, and lucky Dwayne Starks gets a left hand on a shoulder pad, or he could have been off to the races. Again, Cloud's still in there. Pull back in front of him, Frank Chamberlain. Hand off, up the middle. Runs straight into a buzzsaw named Dan Morgan, but he does pick up a couple. That's right, Danny comes back after that last play, comes in and makes a nice, tough tackle. He's done a great job at that linebacker position. He's got 22 total tackles on the season and three tackles for loss. So he's doing a good job at that weak side linebacker. And you take a look offensively, possibly when Miami gets the ball back, Scott Covington, the hero of last year's game, could come in for at quarterback for Miami. Normally, BC might 
feel a little better when the backup quarterback comes in until you take a look at what Covington did to him last year. Faking the handoff and in fact faking the throw. The handoff does go to Cloud as he tries to burst his way free for a first down and might end up inches short. Good look at Covington in his starting debut for Miami and what a debut it was. Yeah, had a terrific game last season, 29, 22 of 29 for 295 yards and three touchdowns. I tell you what, the way he played last year and the way Ryan Clements playing, they might be glad he's coming into the game because there's no bargain with the starter. He's having great success, but this is a plan that Butch Davis likes to do, likes to in insert his backup quarterback, get him some playing time somewhere in that second period. And off, Cloud. He will pick up the first down, fighting his way to pick up close to two, down to the 46-yard line. There's Kenny Kelly. In fact, some Hurricanes fans are already wondering if it might be time to forget the red shirt and break out the future. Steve Kelly make that. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen in, in the way your season's going. Right now, Miami with their 1-4 and four record, they really have to concentrate on winning five straight, and I think that goes with your two best quarterbacks right now. That's Clement and Covington. Shotgun across the middle, almost picked off, but it's grabbed and spinning upfield. Scott Dragos, the big tight end, picking up the first down again inside the 30. Drago's doing a nice job, really just running an option route from his tight end position. That time, Jeffrey Taylor, number 58, didn't get over on the tight end quick enough. Nice decision by Hasselbeck. He sticks it into him. Big gain for the goal, for the Eagles. Miami hustling some defenders off as Hasselbeck going to the air. A little bit of confusion here as they will bring this one out. Close to a first down. And actually, the spot looks a little favorable to Miami, and it will end up being just under a foot shy. Yeah, the BC doing a good job right now. They're down by 21 points. They're trying to get back into this football game before halftime. There's 5.54 left before halftime. They need to get in and not score three, but seven. Really come back and show Miami that they're in this football game. They're not giving up. You know, Right now, it's a tough situation for both teams in the Big East Conference. A win is vital for Miami. They need to spring away five in a row, so big, big day today for both teams. Short handoff, dive up front, and according to the spot, they will give him the first down. You see Chad Pegues and Lewis up front for Miami. They've done a great job. Lewis, the freshman, and Chad Pegues, the junior. Lewis has done a nice job of really holding his own as a freshman, and Chad Pegues didn't start the season uh, on the team due to some problems off the field, but now doing a good job for Miami in that defensive front. Loud in motion towards the top of the screen. The two wideouts towards the bottom. The dump across the middle. Nice catch by the tight end, Tardio. Flags come down, and it looks like they'll call pass interference, but good concentration by the BC big man. Boy, the, the third tight end in that series, in that trio, Rob Tardio, does a great job of going up and getting the football. Hasselbeck just put it close, and you got to credit a great athletic ability by the tight end. You'll see right here number 16 going down the field. Looks like number 59, Jeffrey Smith, or Michael Smith on him, but does a great job of turning and twisting his body to catch the football. Tardio, the big 6'5", 237 pounder out of Ramapo, holding New Jersey. Defense. And it a will be defensive holding. Is declined. Decline it. They'll the take the reception, and it down. will be a first down right at the 15 yard line for Boston College, their deepest penetration of the half. Well, it looks like BC has found some success in that running game, inserting Mike Cloud and throwing the football, going down to the tight end, trying to control the middle of the football field. That's where Miami's had their difficulties in pass defense, all over the middle of the football field. I formation for Boston College. Handoff, Cloud has a hole, might be because of holding on Fortney, but the flags stay in the pocket, and Cloud is decked at the 10. Really nothing in the middle between the tackles that time for BC. Mike Cloud sees that, uses his speed to the outside, and gets five yards for the Eagles. Take a look up front. Miami does a nice job at the point of attack, really nowhere to run. So Mike Cloud decides, hey, I'm fast enough. I'm going to get to the outside, lower my shoulder on Dwayne Starks and try to get as many yards as I can. Productive play, five yards. Cloud set to the right of Hasselback. The pass to the middle instead, and it is a touchdown 
the tight ends are eating up the Miami defense on this BC drive. Well, that's something that Jeffrey Taylor has to get used to in the middle of that field. There's a lot more room for him to cover. That made it, that was so easy that time. Scott Drago's number 83 just runs down the middle of the field and turns around. Great timing by Hasselbeck, a nice delivery. Take a look, he's on the left-hand side. He hits his fist, that boom, the ball's gone. He turns around, he hits it right in between the eight and the three, right in the numbers, touchdown Eagles. Derek Ham was lined up to the outside. There was no way he was going to keep up with him, so they found a hole in the Miami defense. The kick is up, and the kick is good as John Maddich closes out the first touchdown for Boston College as the Eagles eat into the Miami lead. Now it's a 10-point or a 14-point game. Yeah, BC desperately needed to get on the board there with a touchdown. Maddich with a 14th point of the game and here the good pass making it 24 to 10 Miami still leads it back after this the game with six carries but we have seen a lot of Mike Cloud since then in the BC backfield and that helped key the Eagles first touchdown of the day and they also use their tight ends a lot Pollock Dragos and Tardio all combining and Dragos finally getting the touchdown toss yeah 10 plays they go 85 yards for the touchdown both teams have really gone over 80 yards for, for scores today, so the defenses have been on the field for quite a long time, but BC really taking advantage, sticking it in the end zone with 4.53 left to go before halftime. You can see Jones almost the quarterback of the special teams as he calls Popovich up a little bit. They're standing around the seven-yard line, awaiting the kick of Terry Hannafin. The wind picking up a little bit, and the sun beating down again on the artificial turf at Alumni Stadium. Bill Shane, John Congemi with you. The Canes getting out to an early lead. This could be a key drive for Miami. If they do not score, and BC does, the Eagles are back within seven. Hannafin's kick. Looks like Popovich might get a chance, and he will grab it at around the 11-yard line, across the 15, near side, 20, breaks a hole, cutting back at the 25, and finally gang tackled there, finally getting a hold of him at the last moment, Shalom Tolfrey. Yeah, Tolfrey gets it, but Pop does a good job of taking control of the football. That time, a little roll reversal. Usually it's Trent Jones on the return. Popovich takes it. Trent Jones puts a nice block in front of him, and he cuts it up inside. A nice return by the special teams. Back in there. Yes. Yeah, I remember those. That's X and O's, isn't it, Donna? New quarterback for the Canes, Scott Covington. Handoff as Edgerton James is back in the backfield across the 30 and down to the 31. It's a pickup of close to four, and with Covington going in, why not give him a full holster of weapons, and they do. Yeah, they got a lot of bullets in the, in the weapons out there right now. You take a look at Scott Covington for the season. 228 yards and one touchdown on 18 completions. He does a good job. He brings, pushes the ball downfield. He's got a real strong arm, does a good job of running the offense. He's a great changeup to bring in. You know, you always want to get your backup quarterback some playing time, and why not put him into this football game up 24 to 10. Robert Sampson back in there at that left tackle position, and the youngster doing a good job. Covington will hand off to James again, study step at the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up two on this one if he's lucky. It'll bring up a third down and close to four. Yeah, nice defensive play that time by the Eagles. Number 51, Eric Stortz, the senior linebacker. He's 6'2", 230 pounds. He takes charge in the middle of that football field for the Eagles. Nearing the four-minute mark of the first half. Just four minutes and change left to go before the second quarter winds to a close. And this is perhaps the play of the game early on yeah. because if the Canes get a first and keep driving, they hold on to the momentum. But if BC stops them here, the Eagles could be back in this one. Covington, drop back, five steps. He's smothered at the 24-yard line, finally knocked to the turf. A strong performance that time by Markel Blunt, the big linebacker bursting through the middle. Yeah, number five, Edger and James, I think, missed Blunt coming on the blitz. He's looking outside, but the block is inside. Just a, a little bit of miscommunication by the offensive line and, and running backs, and Blunt comes right through the middle. The punt. Bounces at the 47-yard line. Picked up there by Jermaine Walker. Hogtied at the 45. 
and he looked at Edron James in the backfield. It looked like Stores, the other linebacker, might have been coming from the outside, and that's where Edron was looking yeah, first. Yeah, but as a running back, you always go from inside out. You want to protect inside and, and make the rusher come from the outside. He's going to take the longest to get there. You got to go inside out, and that's right where Blunt came. Looked like Edron was looking on the outside edge, just missed Blunt number 90. It was tough because it was a blur coming right by him, homing in on Scott Covington. Let's take a look at the interior. You see Wise at center now. Does a good job up front, but clearly it's two on one. Nobody kicked down on the on the rushing linebacker. It had to be responsibility on in the backfield. Edron James had no one to block. So Wise in at center along with Kayahas, and they kept Hoven out of the backfield. Unfortunately, no one else. Well, let's take a look at this now. BC with 3.20 left to go before halftime. They have three timeouts left to go, and they've got great field position on their own 45-yard line. So if they can go in and get any type of score right now, momentum will stay on their side. Good look at Sampson. Robert see, Sampson on the bench along with Edger and James. Yeah, Art Keogh getting a little excited uh, talking with his running backs and offensive line just because... Miami had complete control of this football game, and now slowly but surely that BC's trying to get back into this game, only down by 14 points. Hurricanes still have a lot of games left to go on this schedule, and a 1-4 and four slate coming into today. Could be 2-4 and four if they can hold on the lead. Temple's no pushover anymore. Just ask BC. That's true. They came out and beat them early uh, at home at Temple. One game left to go on the road, but that is in Blacksburg, and... In recent years, that's not been a pretty sight for Miami. Yeah, that's where Ryan Clement came into the ball game. His first uh, playing time, I believe, as a sophomore in 95, and that came down to the last pass. They lost 13 to 7. Miami did, so they get to go up to uh, Blacksburg and try to revenge that uh, that loss two years ago. A light crowd when we started out, but Alumni Stadium has started to fill up, and perhaps the BC offense and defense has helped them fill up with hope. Clements. Only two incompletions on the day. We might see him back before this first half comes to a close. But Hasselback, a tight formation. Cloud now in motion towards the bottom of the screen. He's rolling towards the top, looking for Crittenden. Has him at midfield. Knocked out of play at the last moment. But the ball incomplete as Dennis Scott laid a lick. Good throw on the outside by Matt Hasselbeck. Just Crittenden, head, his head turned upfield, like wanted to run before he caught the football. You got to catch the ball and really go out of bounds there. Just a, a, a poor play physically by Crittenden. Hasselbeck seems to be finding his stride. Four of his last five have been complete. Hand off this time. Cloud bursting across midfield, dragged down there. Canes combining Leonard Myers, who picked off a Hasselback pass early on, stepping up for the tackle. Both of these teams really picking up the pace. You can hear the pads popping up here in the box. Good job by the offensive line by BC coming off the football, but Miami's defense holding their own. It's a tough third and two right now for this Boston College offense. Tardio coming into the game at one of the tight end positions, and he'll line up to the left. Harding flanks to the left. Double wide outs to the top of the screen with Mike Cloud, the lone man in the backfield. Hasselback across the middle. Tardio tips and almost picked off. Dennis Scott could not get there in time. I think Hasselback was trying to go down the field to Crittenden, and Tardio really thought the ball was coming to him. It was a good defensive play that time uh, for Miami that the ball was tipped by an offensive player. That was third down and short, and the boos you hear because they're not going for it on fourth. The tight end's coming across the middle, but I think he was trying to push the football down to his wide receiver behind him. Number nine, Crittenden, who was open. Looked like for clearly a first down. Malecki back to punt and standing at his 10. Dwayne Starks. Rolling to the near side, he'll let it bounce. This one will be stopped inside the five and down to the three. A nice punt that time. Jason Malecki pinning the Canes within the five and tapping it down there. Mike Hemmert. Canes lead it by 14, but BC picking up the momentum. Holds, but the Boston College special teams has put the Canes in a hole as Ryan Clement back in the huddle at quarterback. Well, we talked about Boston College having all three of their timeouts remaining with 2.21 now left to go before halftime. Big stand by BC right now. They've got Miami in a hole. Offensively, Ryan and, and that offensive team needs to think, hey, we need two first downs. We'll go in with a 14-point lead, build on what we did in the first half, and come out for the second half. But 
BC right now, they have to think, hey, three and out, get the ball back and try to put one score on the board before halftime. By the way, BC's punter Jason Malecki averaging just over 39 yards. Had a 57-yarder earlier this year. That one 54 as he pins the Canes to their three-yard line. Eye formation. It's Joseph and James behind Clement. Fulcher in motion from left to right. The handoff, James tripped up at the two, still fighting for a yardage, and he will not pick it up. Yeah, no, no room to run that time. Really, when you're on the goal line, you need to hit that hole, and you can't really dance around. It's time to go north and south and maybe get two or three. That's a good play, it's, and a great play now by BC. They call timeout, try to stop the clock. It stops now with two minutes and uh, eight seconds left to go before halftime. Edger and James finding the going tough up the middle. And Boston College, as you said, using their first timeout, Clement jogging gingerly to the sidelines to find out what Butch Davis has in mind. No gain at all for Edger and James in a second down. Do they put it in the air here? Do you risk a turnover? Come on. I don't know. I, I try to run the football again here, just try to pound it out. They've had success to the short side of the field. That time, BC wins the battle at the line of scrimmage. I want to make them use another timeout. And see what see roll the dice maybe on third down. Andy Crossland's long punt of the day on the Canes last drive went 40 yards. If he duplicates that here, if the Canes are forced to punt, it would put BC inside midfield with a chance perhaps for a field goal, maybe even a touchdown. But we still got a couple more plays for the Canes to try and pick up the first, and they've had some success early on with the tight end, but that's something they've gone away from with Blake. Yeah, Mondrell Fulcher standing on the sideline. Looks like uh, Daniel Frank's in the ball game at tight end. See how they can work at getting out of from their own end on the three-yard line. Ryan Clement has had great success through the air, only two incompletions on the day, so he's having a great day for this Hurricane offense. Mention the one big injury so far today, Mike Wainer who was filling in at center in his own right. 6'4", 280-pound senior, out. Ty Wise has stepped to the middle. KS, Mateen, Sampson, and Blaze. The offensive line, most likely. I would think if Miami is going to throw the ball on second down, they try to bring a two-wide receiver set to the field and maybe use the short side with the tight end and also Carlo Joseph coming to the short side. They've had success in the plus 20 territory with that play. Look for them maybe to use the short side of the field with the tight end and fullback combination. Looks like it might actually be Eric Schnupp stepping in for Ty Wise at guard. Let's see if that offensive line can hold a pocket for Clement or perhaps even open up a hole for James. Coming up at the half, we'll talk with the University of Miami's Assistant Athletic Director for Community Relations, Roger Bell, who's been a busy man over the past year. Also, some scores and highlights from around the Big East and around the nation. Big play right here. Offset backfield and in motion, top of the screen, it's Daryl Jones. Near side, Clement under pressure, he throws. It's caught by Wayne at the 10, knocked out at the 12. He'll be a yard shy of the first down, but what a gutsy call by Butch Davis. Yeah, nice job to the short side of the field. They take their wide receiver just going down on a curl route. They've got Edger and James going out in the flat. You see the linebacker, 88, going outside. That, that opens up a clear passing lane. Did a good job, Ryan did, stepping up into the pocket. Now watch Reggie. He doesn't give up. He goes up the field trying to get a couple more yards. Still third and short for the Canes. Chris Holvin getting his first penetration and Clement getting rid of it just in time. So Reggie Wayne making it a third and one. Handoff, James. James, first down, 20-yard line, fighting off a tackle by White and dragged out at the 28-yard line. The Canes might have just held on here for the first half. Nice job by number five. You see there, Edger and James goes off right tackle, third and short. Let's take a look at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. Nice job by Curlin Blaze, number 79, really turning his man and hooking the end inside. That allows number five, Edger and James, to go outside for the first down on, on third down. Carlo Joseph also getting a good block here, opening the hole. Yeah, another great block. Wow, just a pancake on the outside by fullback Carlo Joseph. He's done that all day. This time, number 88, Adam Newman, he gets pancaked on the outside. We've seen James be patient. We've seen James hit the hole. Here he does both, cutting inside at the 30-yard line and down to the 32. Time ticking down under 125 and counting in the first half as the Canes get out to the 32. Yeah, I don't believe you'll see BC use 
there are other there, there are two timeouts now that Miami's got the ball outside the 30. You see, Miami has won 56 six straight games when rushing for over 150 yards. They're well on their way to doing that today. In fact, Edrin James already has close to 160 on the day as the Canes approaching 200. Handoff, James. The first hole wasn't there. He dodges to the outside across the 35, and it looks like he'll just be inches shy of another first down. And he stays in bounds. That clock will continue to go down in 46 seconds and counting. Edrin James, breaking the 160-yard mark, has in the first half of play surpassed Darrell McMillan for 10th place in the all-time rushing chart for a game. McMillan had 156 last year against the Citadel. There's a good chance James might be moving his way in the record book today. Little keeper. Clement diving forward, and it looks like they'll give him the yard in the first down. Only 23 seconds left to go on the clock, though. Yeah, that should be the last play of this of this first half, and Miami should be content going in, playing great on offense. Two big turnovers on defense, and they'll continue to hold that 14-point lead. Only one bad defensive stand in the first half of play, and it cost him a touchdown, but with 18, 17, 16, as you said, John, looks like the Canes will be happy with their two-touchdown lead. Ryan Clement and the Canes mosey towards the sideline as Edron James and Ryan Clement. A job well done in the first half. Four, three, two, and one. The first half has come to a close and the Hurricanes halfway towards snapping their losing streak and getting back into bowl contention with their first Big East win of the year. But two more quarters to go when we come back, as we mentioned, special interview with Roger Bell from the athletic department and also take a look at some of the highlights in this first half and some pretty nice ones at that. 24 to 10, Canes lead it at the half. Just total dominance, only five penalties. They've done a good job trying to hold their patience on the offensive and defensive lines, but they've done a great job just dominating BC in the early going. And looking at the individual stats, Edron James, 161 yards. He's already climbed into the top 10 on a day performance, and he has a very good chance of moving into the top three. As well, far as the tight ends go, that's really been the target. Yeah, it really has. And take a look at Ryan Clement, 13 of 15 for 181 and one touchdown. By far his best performance of the 97 season. So what has to happen in the second half? Well, the Canes defense perhaps slowing down the Eagles early on. They were able to do it at the end, and the Canes maybe get back on track. Second half kickoff next. Just seconds away, and the Hurricanes with a 24 to 10 lead over Boston College. We talked about how well they have played to this point. But really, John, when you look back at it, they're just two BC turnovers from perhaps being in a tie game. There's still a lot of work to do. Yeah, you're right. Miami needs to come out and continue the dominance that they had on the line of scrimmage in the first half. BC gets the ball. If they can come down and control it, maybe put some points on the board, continue that momentum they had just deep into that second quarter, it'll be a good game in the second half. Some notes we'll give you, but a great performance in the first by Ryan Clement. Vinny Testaverde had held the record 14 straight completions. Clement completed 13 of his first 14. This kickoff, very good and in just inside the pylon. Touchback. It'll be a touchback. Flags now come down. There's a little altercation going on. And looks like Boston College might have been able to draw a penalty. Yeah, you see D. Brown coming to the sidelines. We're trying to take a look. It was definitely after the play. Yeah, you never want to retaliate. And you, usually the second guy gets caught. And that time, BC gets caught with a bad play to open up the second half. Mike Guazzo and Scott Dragos, two key members of the attack in the first half for Boston College involved. Dwayne Stark should have kept his cool. They'll actually call it both ways. And in fact, if he hadn't pushed back, the Canes might have been able to pick up 15 there. Instead, it offsets. And it'll be a first down. And 10 to go. BC starting from their own 20. Yeah, it looked like BC was going to start in a hole with the uh, personal foul penalty. Now they get it first and 10 on the 20-yard line. Let's see what... What Miami can do defensively, they forced two turnovers in the first half. Let's see if Miami can play a little bit tougher on defense even in the second. Hasselback still in there, starting the second half of play. 
in motion towards the top of the screen side and Todd Pollock they'll fake that way rolling near side and Pollock cuts back against the grain catches it at the 25 and knocked out of play at the 31 yard line a little bit of trickery out of BC starting this second half it was the exact same play they opened up the ball game with they did a good job of play action fake come out to the tight end and it's just pitch and catch from there. Take a look at the left side of your screen. The tight end goes in motion, Pollock. He chips down and then sneaks out in the backfield. 59, Michael Smith had coverage. He got sucked in by the play fake, along with uh, number 33, Jeff Popovich. They make the tackle for the Canes. Omari Walker back in there after missing the entire second quarter and showing no ill signs. Cuts across for a gain of five, close to six. Dwayne Starks comes in with the tackle for the Canes, but as in the first quarter, really want to, when they want to bang at you, BC offensively, they're going to put Omari Walker in the backfield and try to wear you down a little bit up front. That even makes Mike Cloud look that much faster when he comes into the football game. Seventh carry of the game for Walker. He breaks the 60-yard mark as well, but both tailing comparing to, Ed, to Edron James this time. Walker again pulling his way under, and the way he holds the ball, you're not going to knock it loose. No, you're not. Danny Morgan comes over from the weak side linebacker position, puts a pop on Omari Walker, but not after only after he, he has enough yardage for a first down. Take a look at Miami defensively. They're doing a good job up front trying to contain two blockers with one. You see Denny Fortney doing a nice job stringing out the play. Somebody has to come out and help. That help comes from number 44, the freshman Dan Morgan. Perhaps Michael Smith needs to pinch inside a little bit more as he does that time. However, Walker cuts away from the play and finally brought down in the defensive backfield. Popovich grabbed a hold of him and rode him to the turf. At yeah, that time, Denny Fortney, number 99, and number 92, Lewis looked like they got uh, blocked out by each other, really running into each other. That allowed a hole to open up up front for BC, and Omari Walker comes in with a nice play on first down. Take a look at the middle of your screen, 99 right there. They get clogged in the middle of the football field. Actually, Denny gets in the way of Wa Lewis coming inside, but... A nice game by BC. Harding and Crittenden to the top of the screen. The handoff to Walker. Had a hole. Had the pass tense. But he did pick up enough to pick up a first down across the 45 and down close to the 43-yard line. Omari Walker doing his best impersonation of Edger and James here to start the second half. Well, number 44, Dan Morgan did a great job of eluding the block of the fullback, Mike Hermit, number 91. He sheds that block and then comes off and, and helps out on the tackle. So... Miami doing a good job, but the Eagles steadily moving that football down the field. Now at the Miami 44. Wideouts left and right and offset backfield. Behind Matt Hasselbeck. Fakes the handoff to Walker, looking towards the near side. Pressured by Fortney. Throws it across the middle, and it's almost caught there. Good pressure. And Todd Pollock forced for a diving attempt. It looked like Hasselback was looking upfield to Harding, but he was well covered. Well, fool me once and I'll take it. But this time, look, take a look at number 59, Michael Smith. He doesn't buy the play fake. He goes right outside on a tight end and credit Denny Fortney by just grabbing the shoulder of number 89, Todd Pollock. They wanted to go to the tight end early. Hasselbeck made a bad decision trying to force the football in there. But a nice play by number 99, Denny Fortney, and also 59, Michael Smith. Mike Hemmert, the fullback. Cloud back in the tailback position. He'll pick up the ball, but he won't pick up a yard. In fact, he might have lost one. Looks like the Hurricanes stiffening at the right time. BC breaking into their half of the field, but it's going to be a third down and long. Yeah, Jeffrey Taylor doing a nice job, along with Michael Smith and Dan Morgan. John Miles, number 61, the left tackle for BC. I think he's going to have nightmares of 44 running by him because Dan Morgan really showing his speed at that linebacker position, along with Taylor and Smith. Eugene Ridgely back in there at safety for the Canes as Hasselback dropping back across the middle. Nice catch. Brought down quickly, though, as making sure he would not be picking up any yardage after the catch. Jeffrey Taylor, and it's just shy of the first down. And the cries from the stands for BC to go for it. Yeah, the tight end really taking advantage of the coverage underneath. You see Morgan on the outside trying to pinch the two receivers outside. And really, they just bracket the tight end with the linebackers. But Pollock finds a soft spot in the middle between Jeffrey Taylor and Dan Morgan. Big early call here in the second half. Boston College going for it on fourth and one. Hasselbeck tried to dive the last time. Cloud in the backfield. He'll touch the handoff. Oh, he went thrown to the outside. He did have the chance for the touchdown. His breaking three was number 83, Scott Dragos. 
but also wide open, the fullback, Mike Hemmert, and he does pick up the first. Well, he picked up the first down, but he gives up a touchdown. Boy, did he miss a golden opportunity. You see nobody around, number 83, Scott Dragos. He walks in from the 20-yard line, but they do pick up the first down and move the change, but those opportunities don't come up that often against the Miami defense. You have to take advantage and stick it in the end zone when you can. But as a quarterback, obviously, you look towards your first option. Is that maybe just a bad play where they should have looked well, I think, to I think he was concentrating on getting the first down and really not looking downfield. Miami just busted the coverage. Two wideouts to the bottom of the screen, the handoff. Straight up the middle. Spinning away and across the 20 and down to the 15. Another good effort by Mike Clout. First down, Boston College making a game of it. Credit that offensive play, that success to number 74, the left offensive guard, Doug Brzezinski. He did a great job on Damian Lewis, the freshman defensive tackle for Miami. A little bit of a nick. Nate Brooks knocked out of the backfield. Brooks has had his problems this year as he and Nick Ward have been sharing time at that right corner position. Yeah, you take a look at his replacement, number 22, the freshman back into the football game, Leonard Myers. Already has an interception on the day, That's and Myers right. might be stamping his name towards the starting lineup. I formation, handoff to the fullback. Hemmert pulls through to the 10 and down to the seven yard line. Finally brought down at the last moment. Looked like it might be Jeffrey Taylor involved on the tackle. Well, we talked about the, su the success of Miami running the football. Eugene Ridgely finally in on the tackle for Miami, but now Boston College coming out and running the football down Miami's throat to open the second half. They're trying to do a good job of building on what they did late in the second quarter. Now they're bringing it out from the halftime. Still a few more plays and minutes to go of BC's to culminate this one. It's a second down and just over two. The handoff, Cloud, Cloud inside the five and down to the three. Spins for the first down, it's first and goal. Just when you need that speed from the tailback position, out goes Omari Walker and in goes Mike Cloud. He hits the hole with a burst of speed, getting the ball inside the five to the two yard line. Take a look at it from ground level. You see Michael Smith getting kicked out by the tight end, Tardio, and it's all Mike Cloud, number 21, just going north and south, using his ability to get closer to that goal line. Dwayne Starks also helping, but now he steps to the sideline with Myers. Power formation offensively and defensively. Hemmert in the tailback position. He'll get it, tries to pull his way through. Second effort, reaches over. Touchdown, Boston College. Yeah, just power football by BC. You get the fullback, Mike Hemmer, number 91. Looks like the ball just crossed the plane of the goal line. I don't know if his body boot was in, but all that matters is that football crossing the goal line, and it's touchdown for Boston College. And those two first-half turnovers by BC loom even larger now. The Canes will hold on to a touchdown lead here. Just smash mouth football up front from BC. Miami actually did a good job at the point of attack. They had a lot of white helmets hitting Herman in the backfield, but to no avail, he reaches the football over the goal line for the Eagles score. Michael Smith unable to wrap him up, and the extra point sails through the uprights, and John Matlich makes it a seven-point game. This was a game Miami threatened to run away with in the first half of play, but Hemmert busting his way through the DC, the UM defensive line, cuts it to a touchdown game. And the Boston College fans, not quite leaping for joy yet, maybe getting a little bit of help. 24-17, Kane still lead it. To tell you the truth though, the way the last quarter plus has gone, they have to feel rather fortunate about that. They really do. I mean, 13 plays, 80 yards. They eat up almost five minutes on the clock. Boston College comes out and really shows Miami that, hey, we're not going to lay down and let you kick us around in the second half. They come out and put us a, a touchdown on the board. Now we're back into a football game at 24-17. Hannafin getting set to kick it off for Boston College and back deep, standing in a line at their five. Jones and Popovich. Not letting Boston College know until the last time which way they are gearing their attack and also waiting till the last moment to see which way BC might end up kicking it. They'd like to get into the hands of Trent Jones. And he heads off towards the near side. Hannafin blasting it deep, and this one will 
almost reached the end zone. Jones grabs it, steps in, turns up field. He's got a hole. Across the 10 to the 20 to the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. His momentum might have carried him into the end zone. A gutsy call by Trent Jones, but he makes it pay. And the Canes will start out at their own 30 three 34 yard line first and 10. Well, anytime Trent Jones gets his hands on the football in a special team situation you got to be happy if you're a University of Miami fan. He has the ability to take it the distance. Did a nice job of coming out of the end zone. High formation behind Clement. It's Joseph and James. Reggie Wayne to the bottom of the screen in motion. Santana Moss at the top. Handoff. James. James cuts one tackle. Dodges another at the 40 and finally dragged down at the 45 yard line. Good play there by Edger and James, and finally bringing him down, Pat Feltz. That's a momentum buster right there on first down. Miami comes out and goes to their workhorse. He's getting the bulk of the load in the first half. He starts out in the second half with a big gain on first down. Edger and James is a power back. Well, he can take you and go and go the distance. James getting close, in fact, surpassing the 170-yard mark. I formation. In motion, top of the screen is Daryl Jones. Clement across the middle, hits Franks the tight end at the 30 or the 43-yard line. And Ryan Clement continues his solid play in the first half here in the second. This is like shooting ducks for Ryan Clement. These guys are wide open, and he's taking advantage of the middle of the field. Watch your tight end. Franks down the middle of the field, nobody around him, and Ryan does a great job of just threading, you know, putting it in where nobody's there. Markel Blunt, number 90, really has the coverage in the middle of the field, way out of position, and Daniel Franks takes it advantage of the situation. Have to keep him honest, and Edger and James getting the fake handoff. That would blunt up. Pressure. Dumps it across, and it's almost picked off. Tried to go to James, curling away from the pressure, but Rook Hield almost had that one gift wrap for Boy, him. Boy, he sure did. He had it number 59. You see Boston in a blitz. They come out and tried to dump the football off to James, but Ryan was under duress. Good pressure up front by Mike Willits, number 98. Ryan does the same play action fake as he did going to the tight end the play before, but just red jerseys all around. Boston College doing a nice job defensively with that defensive line, and you got to make that play if, if you're at linebacker. You don't get many chances to get hit right in the face. You see Chris Holvin also first and through. They've been able to keep him in check for much of the game. Holvin dodges past James on that one as he cuts across the line of scrimmage, across the 40 and down to the 38. It'll be a third down and about five after Edron James picks up another chunk of yardage. We talked about last week against Virginia Tech, Chris Hoven having 13 total tackles and three sacks. That last play, he made Ty Wise really earn his pay up front. Edron James, the last four games, 211 yards. This game, he's got 172. Just a great job of running the football. Credit that offensive line for giving him some holes to run through. High formation, culture in motion. Towards the top of the screen, Clement faking the pitch, looking for Franks, lofts it up. Franks gets popped, but that pass uncatchable, making sure when he had the chance to lay a lick on UM's big tight end, number three, Pedro Serino. And remember, he was burned earlier in the first half on Santana Moss's first down saving reception, and he got a lot of frustration out on that hit. Yeah, and that coach is making sure he's saying, hey, don't take a foolish penalty. If it's overthrown, don't go for the big hit and give them new life. Good job. Good defensive stand that time by BC. Andy Crossland just across midfield. He'll boot this one. Looking for the sideline. Touched back by Myers and down inside the five. The University of Miami pinning him down is Wilbur Valdez. Finally touches it down and a good kick, 36 yards for Andy Crossland as he pins the Eagles deep. Well, that's great deep, uh, special teams play that time by number 22, Leonard Myers. 24 to 17, the Eagles are getting it back with eight plus left to go in the third quarter. Who are you talking to, Phil? I, I'll take I'll take uh, Jones on the right. Who do you want to talk well, to? I'll take the touchdown guy. You got the touchdown I'll guy. Take you got Reggie Wayne. Wayne. And, and I guess uh, uh, Santana's left out. He's talking to nobody. He's fooling everybody. He's not talking to anybody. Look at these guys. I think they're, they're all talking, talking to, each, to other. each other. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they get those those miles. You never know. <laughs> Trade in their uh, AT&T. Could be talking to Ryan Clement, too. Edron James, though, he's been a workhorse today and rapidly climbing up the record charts. We'll show you how in just a moment, but not many backs have gone where he has today. 176 yards already with more than a quarter left to go. 
Boston College pin deep. Hasselbeck, handoff, back in there's Omari Walker, and man, he got out of the shadow in a hurry. Close to the 15-yard line, good run by the senior back for Boston College. Talk about power and speed combined into one. You got Omari Walker, he's 5'10", 212 pounds, and he's a senior. He takes the Eagles outside the 15-yard line, doing a good job on first down. That offensive line creating a big hole. You see Chad Pegues getting turned outside, and no linebacker help there. Good job by Omari Walker, getting his shoulder square upfield, north and south, big power back. Jeffrey Taylor had a chance to guess, and he guessed the wrong way, and that gave another five yards for Walker. Mansfield, Massachusetts native. In there now is Cloud. Flag comes down, close to holding, perhaps offsides. Drag down, it would be a loss. Good pressure by Taylor, who got even that time against Mike Cloud. Yeah, early flag coming from the Miami sidelines. Interesting to see, it's got to be on Boston College. Legal procedure against the Eagles. That'll knock them back a step. There is a flag on the play. See Jeffrey Taylor, number 58. He gets his first start at middle linebacker today for the Canes. Illegal formation. Offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. Second down. So the Canes, who knocked Cloud back for a loss of two, will stick with that as they'll also force BC to give up a down. So second down and 12 rather than first and 15. Yeah, good play by the Miami defensive front. Some news from the sidelines. Mike Wayner, who started at center today, sprained right ankle. He is gone for the day. Ty Wise stepping in for the rest of this one. Shifting formation on the Canes four-man front. Handoff. Omari Walker breaks through the first two Canes, but gets back to the original line of scrimmage before he's eventually brought down. Derek Ham grabbed a hold of his ankle. Yeah, Derek Ham, number 71 from that defensive end position, comes out. He's 6'5", 250. He's a junior. He's doing a good job uh, containing guys on the outside. Really, in, in between the tackles, have had the Eagles have had success running the football, but he's coming up big today in the second half for the Canes. Talked about James breaking the 100-yard mark and getting close to two. Well, that just puts Omari Walker. 101 yards for the senior back. The play action looking across the field, going for the tight end, Tardio, and it's knocked away incomplete. Fourth down and a punting situation for Boston College. Yeah, surprising Boston College didn't go attack the middle of the football field with the tight end. They've had success doing that instead of going out to the flat. This time the tight end on a crossing route. But up front, take a look at this offensive uh, line play. Great protection for Hasselbeck to really pick and choose who he wanted to go with. But good defensive secondary help by the Canes. Standing back just across his own 40-yard line, Dwayne Starks. Forced retreat back to the 34, 33. He drops it, pressured from behind, picks it up back to his 30, and he'll lose a couple of yards on this return. Another booming kick by BC's punter Jason Malecki. His first one, 54 yards, and that one pretty darn close. Dragos on the tackle. Phil, Miami really needs to come out now. It's their second possession of the, of the uh, third quarter. They need to come out and really control the football as they did on the first possession. Use the running attack. Edron James has done a nice job in this football game. He's running at will. And that Miami offensive line now, Wayner, as you said, not coming back into the football game. So Ty Wise is going to have to play a, a big presence at that center position. Miami defensive backs take a look at Myers, who's playing a, a big role today as a freshman, along with Dan Morgan on that defense. A lot of freshmen really coming up and showing well for Miami all season, but particularly today. Next Saturday, college football action, Indiana at Iowa. Check it out, 12 noon Eastern. Sports Channel, your home for hard-hitting college football, the Big Ten Game of the Week, exclusively on Sports Channel. Edron James, 176 yards so far today for the Canes. He's carried the ball 21 times. Puts into him into some illustrious company. 
Stephen McGuire with his best career performance at 176 yards against FSU back in 1990. Of course, Lorenzo Roan still holds the all-time mark, close to 250 back in 1980 against East Carolina. But that's not out of the realm of possibility the way James has been running today. No, and it's going to be up to that offensive line to give him a couple creases in between the tackles and bust him into that BC secondary. First down and 10 for the Canes at their own 32-yard line. Moving from the right to the left, the handoff to James. Should have been stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he fights his way forward. He'll pick up a yard. Almost looks like BC's daring Miami to throw the football here in this second half. Really committing a lot of people to the offensive line. So Edron James tied for third with Woody Thompson all time. Thompson got his 180 yards, in fact, against Boston College back in 1973. Frank Smith got 182 against Chattanooga all the way back in 51. He's and got a crease. James, chance to break across the 40 and down. Flags behind the play, close to a first down for Edger and James if it stands. I think they're going to bring this one back to a holding call. Number 75, Damon Neely. Looked like he uh, was upset getting off the uh, BC turf, and that should come back. Six minutes and one second left to go in this third quarter. Take a look at big number 75 coming out. Just gets that right arm underneath the chin, and then he goes around and almost tackles the BC defender from behind. And there were two, two officials right on it. Doing Double the flag there. Holding offense, 10 yards. Looks like a meta been holding. Second down. Yeah, Damon just really had great position to go ahead and kick him out, and it just looked like he lost his footing going in or actually tried to leave his feet, got caught out of position, and really just held on for dear life to get that guy, the BC defender, to the turf. Damon Neely, the 6'3", 300-pound junior, out of Roslyn, Pennsylvania, stepping in as Ty Wise, assuming the center role. Clement, under pressure, flips out to James, almost lost his balance, but fights his way back to the 30. Almost picks up the yardage from the penalty. It'll be a third down at about 12. Yeah, it looked like almost a slip screen outside. The receiver's going down hook route, and Ryan just dumps it off to Edron James in the flat. But good pursuit by the BC defense. You know, it's a seven-point game right now. BC needs to get the ball back in their offense. Miami coming back. See the tight end down the middle field. He's covered. Ryan flushes out and actually runs towards the screen. See Ty Wise and Carlos Cajayas out in front trying to provide some blocking. That'll bring up a third and 12 for this Kane offense. One man in the backfield. And it's Trent Jones behind Ryan Clement. But before they even get the snap off, flags are down. It's third down and 12 when they started out in Miami in a passing situation, and they might have jumped. Yeah, they jumped in the interior line that time. You've got some new people in there, not used to hearing a snap count. With this crowd getting into the football game, might be tough to hear out there on the field, but that's no excuse. Miami puts themselves in a hole. They had it already third and 12. Now it looks like it's closer to third and 17. And if they do not make it here, Boston College will get the ball back in good field position with a chance to tie it up or even take the lead if they can score on their next possession. And it's up to Ryan Clement at the moment. They need to get to the 42-yard line. Straight drop back, looking for Franks, throwing it up in the air for Reggie Wayne. He was bumped, but the official says it was uncatchable, just shy of the first down marker. The Canes will be forced to punt it away. Yeah, Mike Willits and Chris Hovan, you see up front, really pressuring Ryan Clement. He gets whacked trying to throw this football out to his freshman receiver on the comeback, Reggie Wayne. Not a lot of room outside to work. Reggie on the short side of the field, just going to run a comeback route. But you see three red jerseys in that area, especially two deep. Good coverage by BC that time. Really no threat of going, breaking the cushion by the wideout. Pat Phelps on the coverage and the fair catch called for on Crossland's punt. Jermaine Walker catches it at the 40. A 40-yard punt on the nose by Crosland. Yeah, take a look at that last passing play. You see just a busted assignment up, up front. Chris Hoven really comes through, and he, he really paid for that. Number 76, Robert Sampson, his left tackle. A little bit of a bust up front. What makes Hoven so impressive, 6'3", 282-pound sophomore. He was actually held at the line. The officials did not see it. When he finally burst through, he had so much speed 
He got to Clement just after the ball got away. Well, Ryan couldn't hold the football any longer. He actually threw it early. And you see Art Kehoe talking with Butch Davis and Ryan Clement about protection, uh, how they're going to figure out and contain contain some people up front for BC. Chris Hoven really having his way as he did last week with Virginia Tech. He's not uh, he's a spectacular player, not taking anything away from Miami's offensive line, but they're facing one, hey, one guy that's really good. Bring your asses down here. I think that means to come here <laughs> rather quickly. I, I think that is coach speak, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty common on the sidelines, I would guess, but they're trying to figure out what happened on that last play, and I, I guess Ty Wise has the answer to Art Kehoe's question. There's Damon Neely, the junior, along with Robert Sampson, the sophomore, and Ty Wise, another sophomore. A very young offensive line for the Canes. On the other side, things seem to be calming down. Yeah, Ty, Ty failing to bring those mules down when Art Kehoe was asking for them. But on the other side, the BC sideline is relatively calm. <laughs> you know, they're doing a good job of trying to stay in this football game. They're only down 12, uh, four, one touchdown, which is 24-17. They get great field position right here on the uh, Boston College 41-yard line. Well, the Canes can't find their mules. BC trying to line their ducks in a row. A touchdown here for a Matt Hasselbeck-led eagle drive, and they are back tied in this one. Pass to the middle. It's caught. Finally dragged down. Todd Pollock sprained his ankle. Earlier on, had it taped, and he's back out there. You could see he wasn't going to be running anywhere anytime soon, but he did get open, and Dennis Scott wrapped him up. Yeah, he's hurting, and you can tell he's coming out of the football game, but they go back. BC goes back to the middle of the football field where they've had success with that tight end. Look for them to continue to uh, try to exploit that uh, inexperience at middle linebacker with Jeffrey Taylor. Pollock, Dragos, and Tardio have all been involved in the offense right now. Handoff instead to Amari Walker cutting up inside, and he is just bulldozed under. And in fact, his own man, Noah LaRose, just pushed a Kane defender right on top of him. Close to a first down. It's about three yards to go on third. Yeah, the turf monster gets Omari Walker. No one in the middle of the football field. Should have been an easy first down for the Boston College offense, but it looked like uh, he tripped over his own feet trying to make an effort to get that first down. Four-man wall and Denny Fortney giving it all despite that ailing left knee. Hasselback needs a first down here. Crittenden in the middle. He's looking for him. Instead, he passes it behind. To the young tight end, Tardio, off his fingertips, dropped in complete, and the Miami defense holds. Actually, there was some bad communication going on with the receiver, Derek Crittenden, and the tight end, Rob Tardio. You see him, you'll see them cross, and it's actually they pick each other and slow the pattern down and force Hasselbeck to reload. That forces a throw behind him, results in a punting opportunity for BC. Dwayne Starks all the way back at his 10-yard line. This one will hang in the air off the boot of Jason Malecki and will be fair caught at the 16-yard line. A 36-yard effort, no return. And Jason Malecki has done a pretty good job punting the ball when BC's needed to. Yes, he has, and it's really a, a tug of war in this third quarter. After coming out and, and driving the length of the field, Miami really stalling offensively. They get the ball now on the 16-yard line with 3.23 left to go in this third quarter. And right now, it's, it's a great football game. It's a great defensive struggle right now. Miami had their way on the ground and through the air in the first half, now really trying to struggle for yardage in this third quarter. 3.23 left to go, and Ryan Clement searching for a play that might help the Canes get back into this one. And remember, he hit 13 of his first 14. Since then, it's been a different story, two of nine. Yeah, closing in on 200 yards with one touchdown. That to Reggie Wayne on a corner route in the first quarter. But Ryan's getting beat up the last couple of series out there. And the offensive line right now, it looks like they have Ty Wise in, still at center with uh, Damon Neely at, at left guard and Robert Sampson at left tackle. We got Cajayas at right guard and Curlin Blaze at right tackle. So these guys, it's all it's up to them, really. It always comes down to the offensive line. How successful are you going to be as an offense? And those five guys really need to pick it up in this third quarter. Curlin Blaze and Carlos Cajayas, the seniors, you'd expect the leadership to come from them, but really most of the offense has come towards this near side. Well, it's been it's been kind of tough for the offensive line to really get together. They've had so many injuries and so many different people in at spots to, for them to gel. 
different guys are playing next to different people, not every every game, but every play. Moss and Reggie Wayne, the two youngsters, split off towards the near side. Hand off, Edrin James dodges one tackle across the 20, holds his feet across the 30. He's got a chance, 40 to the midfield. One man can catch him, and he's finally knocked down at the 27-yard line. Shalom Tolfrey made sure he was not going to get past him for the touchdown this time. Wow, he's incredible. That looked like a basic four or five-yard run and he takes it the, almost the distance. Miami really does a great job of getting outside and Edger and James keeping his balance and never giving up. Take a look, he gets the handoff deep in the backfield, follows number 75, Damon Neely, great kickout block, then runs through an arm tackle, now it's all speed. What a, he has great ability to really straighten his shoulders up and go up the sideline. Reggie Wayne trying to pitch in a block, Tolfrey knocks him out of bounds for BC, but Edger and James, huge game. A 56-yard game for James. He'll burst through and look for some short yardage this time almost to the 25 yard line they'll say he's to the 26 edrin james with a 69 yard run for pay dirt on his second carry and that one 56 up to 233 now make it 234 yards on the game for james the second best in fact now the first best performance in history is just 15 yards away take a look at the short side of the field here Clement across the middle. They'll hit Moss at the 20-yard line, back to the 19. It's a pickup of seven. Nice job coming outside. I thought they were going to try to work that tight end fullback to the short side. They come out with a two-receiver combination on the outside. Santana Moss running the out. You got Wayne on the up route. Nice job adjusting to the ball behind him. That wind's picked up, and it's almost coming from the BC sideline to the Miami sideline. That ball was really affected by the wind, but a nice catch anyway on the outside by Santana Moss. The clock nears two minutes left to go in the third. The Canes trying to regain some momentum. The long run from Edrum James has put him close to the 20. James with Joseph dodging in front of him. Pass near side. Wayne, the quick flick to the near side, and Wayne almost burst past the defender, Pedro Serino. You're right, Serino did a good job, but they come with a corner blitz. Ryan Clement sees it, doesn't even take a step back. One step, reloads and gets it out to his wide receiver. They tried to come on the short side blitz. Miami, very alert, doing a nice job of picking up the blitz. He was really caught in no man's land number 10 Phelps he wasn't close enough to really create pressure to Ryan Clement Ryan did the smart thing as a senior quarterback and off James he got it at the 14 he'll fight his way to the 10 pickup of four for James second down they can get a first if they get to the four this is where Miami can really put this football game away coming in you see Edron James 238 yards and one touchdown on 25 carries He's going to be a tired young man, but he'll be happier if they can push it in to the end zone. The best performance in UM history, Lorenzo Rohn back in 1980 against East Carolina, 249 yards, and Edron James has been the man today. Taking the handoff, flicking it out, Carlo Joseph at the five, dives for the end zone, he's out at the two. First and goal for the Canes. Carlo trying to get his third touchdown of the season on a reception. Stretches the ball over, but he was out at the two. Big play by Miami. They convert on second down. And what a great drive, all set up by Edger and James's long run. But take a look here. Off the play fake, Ryan sticks the football in there, takes it back, and he's wide open in the right flat. Tries to stick the ball in the end zone, but a good job of George White pushing him out of bounds for BC. First and goal on the two. We were giving some flack to the Canes offensive line, but they have responded here on the first drive. Clement, James, touchdown Miami. Straight through the middle, he wasn't even touched. Miami on the board. And momentum swinging towards this near sideline. Well, you think Art Kehoe's message got across to the offensive line? They found the last mules. Series, they found the donkeys. Everybody's in together. Great block at the point of attack. Carlo Joseph doing a nice job. Another pancake. And as you said, untouched. Edron James goes in after his big play. That was the easiest two-yard, three-yard run he's ever had. Third touchdown of the game for Edron James. Crossland, left-footed boot. It's through. Canes to 30. <clears throat> Good performance by the Canes. They've stretched the lead back, 31 to 17. Take a look at the point of attack. Just a great job. Damon Neely hooks his man. Offensive line does a great job. Miami 31, Boston College 17.
Short kickoff by Guy Tan, and Boston College will end up with it at their own 25-yard line, grabbing it Frank Chamberlain, sophomore running back out of Mawa, New Jersey. The University of Miami back on the scoreboard, and it did not take long. The big play, the 56-yard run from Edrin James as he's cracked the 240 mark with three touchdowns, one of the best performances by a Kane running back in history. Hasselback, handoff, Cloud fakes it, smothered under, behind the play at the 15-yard line. Great rush up the middle by Derek Ham. Well, that's the first time they've tried Derek Ham on that play fake. Usually they were running into Denny Fortney's side. He figured it out, so they figured, let's go to the other side, see if Derek Ham can do it. He doesn't bite on the fake. Right side of your screen, you see he takes an inside rush and then keeps leverage. He doesn't let the quarterback get outside. That was key. Great job by Derek Ham. The Canes back up to a two-touchdown lead. Split backs, Hasselback sandwiched between them. Takes the handoff. Instead, he does give it off to Cloud. Dodgers one tackle from Starks across the 30-yard line. Finally brought down. Dan Morgan wrapped him up, but he does pick up a bulk of the yardage that was lost in the sack. Jeff Popovich was in great position to make that play. I think he just overran Mike Cloud, and Mike Cloud showing his speed. As you said, Dan Morgan on the tackle, but a big play on second down. Get some of that yardage back. The clock has struck zero. The third quarter has come to a close, and the Canes close it on a positive note. 31-17, Hurricanes lead it. Dan Morgan made sure Cloud would not change the scoreboard on that run. Another 15 minutes to go. The Canes looking for victory. The 17, Canes lead it. James with a couple of touchdown runs in the early going. Sandwiched around Maddich's field goal and Reggie Wayne with a 19-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Clement. Take a look at the stats through three quarters. Canes continuing to pound it through the ground and through the air, having some success as well. Crosland had a field goal in the second. Scott Dragos finally got a touchdown on the board for BC to close out the first half, and Mike Hemmert bowled his way through from short yardage, cutting the Canes lead to seven. The long run from Edger and James setting up the shorter one of two yards away, and that's where we stand right now as Edrin James rapidly writing his name in the record book again. Things looking good, and that's that four fingers in the air right now. After taking a look at that stat, you think we go out on a limb say Miami has a good shot of winning this football game? Was it the 150 <laughs> yards performances, the 200 that's yard right. performances, the fourth quarter leads? The same point, remember, the last time BC actually beat Miami was similar numbers back here when Darren, when uh, Doug Flutie found Gerard Phelan. Nine yards away for Edrin James to put his name at the top of the record book. Right now, Boston College will have it. Hasselback with Cloud to his left. Looking deep, left side, actually throws underneath the Cloud, and he might have had a chance to pick up Mike Guazzo. Guazzo was open at midfield, instead he threw it underneath. Yeah, it took a little bit of what, little patience by Hasselbeck, the, the senior quarterback. I like Mike Cloud. I tell you what, get the ball in his hands. He looks like he's he can make, break a game wide open. He's got great speed. He's got good hands for a tailback, and uh, I like him in this situation. Cloud, 13 carries for 90 yards. First reception of the day. This time they'll go back to the old-fashioned way as he dives across the 40 to the 42-yard line. He is approaching the 100-yard mark. Yeah, and it almost... Uh, pales in comparison, you know, you get 100 yards and it's not good enough because Ed Edger and James really lighting up the scoreboard, running from goal line to goal line for Miami, but he's a solid back, and he, like I said, he's one of the top runners in the Big East Conference. It, he's only a junior, and he, he's doing a good job catching the football. Came into this game with six catches for 100 yards and came into the game just under 500 yards rushing. And off cloud. Nice cut at the 45 across midfield and down to the Canes 45. First down and 10 for Boston College's Cloud breaks the century mark. He is playing very well today. Boy, what great explosiveness. You see Mike Cloud coming in, supposed to go off right tackle. Great vision. He cuts it back. Then that move right there, he idles it down, and then he's got that quick next step and gets him into the Miami secondary. The ball's on the Miami 45-yard line. 
Good look at Mike Cloud. 5'11 junior from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Gets the handoff across the 40, close to first down yardage again. He's ripping him off nine and 10 yards at a time. Andy Mitchum, a great block, and Dan Morgan finally dragged him down. Yeah, it's pretty easy to hide behind a 6'4", 277 right guard. Andy Mitchum, number 60, you see him pulling outside. Does a nice job of just kicking out on Michael Smith, number 59. Dan Morgan, another tackle from the one side of the football field to the other. This young man from Miami can run sideline to sideline. Second down and short. Offset formation behind. Instead, they'll hand it to Cloud. He cuts back against the grain, and what a hole. To the 20, to the 10. A block from Hasselback and Cloud into the end zone for a touchdown. Popovich got nailed by the BC quarterback, and Cloud untouched into the end zone. Yeah, Miami got caught that time a little bit over-pursuing. They had Cloud contained on the right sideline, but great vision again and acceleration back to the Miami sideline. Cloud goes in for the BC score. Another look at it. You see he's going off right tackle. Really gets bumped into his own man, and now that enables him to cut back. Take a look at the jersey behind trailing. At least six or seven jerseys. They were in great position on the sidelines, but they over-pursued. Now take a look at your quarterback. Hasselbeck does a nice job of just trying to get in his way. I don't know if he actually made contact, but it was a good job of coming off of him like he didn't. The extra point is good by Maddich, and we're back into a ball game here. 31-24, to Boston College. Punch for punch, holding their own for the Canes. They won't go away, Phil. This is a great game. Great great effort by Mike Cloud on that 42-yard touchdown run. So the Canes back to a seven-point lead. Mike Cloud stepping in for Omari Walker, who has 100 yards of his own, but just doesn't seem to be sharp today. Cloud and James, razor sharp. 31-24, back with more after this on Sports Channel Florida. That'll keep you company. Don't go. Don't go away. Don't. All right, come on. What job did you get? Uh, administrative assistant. You, you're a secretary. No. My assistant executive vice president. Right. You're his secretary. Uh, no. So what, what do you do all day? Type file, type calls. Calls? Secretary stuff. I am not a secretary. Grab me a beer. Get us yourself. There's a good look at Omari Walker. And filling in for Walker today in the role of running back. <laughs> That's right. Number 21, Mike Cloud. And combined, think about this. They have 100 yards and 156 yards. So what, 259 yards combined actually between those two? Not bad. They're actually keeping up with Edron James. Yeah, you're right. And that's pretty good math on your part, too. I didn't even see you go to the calculator. Well, you know, I learned to count with my socks <laughs> on. That helps. Another fair catch. The short kickoff today. No real excitement for Trent Jones for much of the day. But the Canes will start out at the 24. And again, they are faced because of BC's successful drive with trying to do something themselves. That's right. They got 13-11 left to go in this football game. And they're going to ask Edger and James and Ryan Clement and that offensive line to provide them with a, a, a long drive, maybe eat some time off this clock. Just a field goal now. They're in a position where they don't need a touchdown. They need to put this game with the, out of reach. You need two scores for BC to win. Here's a chance for Clement, who remains in there into the fourth. The handoff to Edgerin James across the 25 and close to the 30. He picked up just under five yards, and it'll be second down with five to go. That's going to be a tired young man going back on that plane tonight, but he's going to earn every bit of rest because he's doing a great job ripping off tackles left and right, but doing a good job closer to the short side of the field. That's where he's been most effective. Again, keep an eye on Chris Hoven. He, along with Mike Willits, have been spending a lot of time on the Canes' backfield today. 
Offset formation in the backfield, faking the handoff to Joseph, hands to James, breaks through the tackle of Brooke Heald and actually fights his way close to first down yardage. The whistle finally blows. They'll mark him down at the 33. Yeah, that time it looked like Edron James really didn't have a lot of running room in the backfield. A nice job of penetration by the defensive front of BC. Actually, it looked like Damon Neely was trying to come around and pull outside, and it looked like Edron decided to cut it up inside. The timing was messed up a little bit in the backfield on that counterplay. The 6'1", 220-pound sophomore, sophomore from Amokali, Florida, is writing his name in the record book today. That carry put him into the best single game performance by a Canes running back, and he has three touchdowns to his name to boot. Keeping it himself, Clement, he'll get across the 35 and a first down for the Canes. Melvin Bratton and Alonzo Highsmith have scored four touchdowns apiece in Canes history. Bill Italian way back in 1933 against Tiny Piedmont College had five. Might be getting ahead of ourselves, but hey, the way Edgar hey, James is what, playing today, anything's possible. You got 11:42 and counting left to go. He's done a lot with a little time today. He's gone. He's bust some big runs of over 60 yards, so he can do it. James in the backfield. Joseph to his right, now in motion towards the left. Top of the screen, Daryl Jones. Clement looking that way. Eludes the pressure from Hoven. Tripped up. No! Dodges that, but he slams straight into Pedro Serino, and he'll end up running around a lot and won't even pick up a yard. We take a look. Carlton Rowe, the cornerback from the short side. They come with another corner blitz. BC trying to make some things happen. He's picked up by Edron James, but that allows somebody else in the middle to get free. You see great pursuit again from Chris Hoven, number 95. Ryan does the smart thing, just lowers his shoulders, get what he can. He gets one yard out of the deal, but in the middle of the, foot, uh, the football field, Chris Hoven, number 95, doing a great job. 6'3", 282 pounder. Top of the screen, Santana Moss cuts towards the inside, looking for Franks. Instead, near side, it's Reggie Wayne. He'll be wrapped up a short gain after the catch. But he does get across the 45 and very close to a first down. Looks like he might be inches shot. Yeah, Reggie has to be careful. He takes that ball and tucks it away after the catch. They've been successful on this curl route all day. Ryan just steps up, hits his fifth step and throws. But I'd say he's been getting some pressure in his face the second half in the middle of the football field. They've been doing a good job, BC has, up front trying to create some pressure and put Ryan to the turf. Not saying that Scott Covington could not handle that type of pressure. But for all of the detractors of Ryan Clement, there are many quarterbacks who are playing college football today who would have already been on the sideline putting ice bags everywhere. I tell you what, I've been sore a few times going from the Orange Bowl just watching the beating he's taken a couple games. But he's a competitor. He proved that last year against West Virginia playing with the shoulder problem. And he did a great job in leading this team. And, and he's a guy, you know, a lot of people take shots at him, but he's still out there. And I guess if the coaching staff still believes he can do the job, I mean, He's had a great performance today. Top of the screen, Daryl Jones at the bottom. It's Reggie Wayne who gave him the first down. Blitz from the middle. Line holds briefly. Pass to Franks. He held on the pass behind him. He'll pick up five. Clement decked again and again. It was Chris Hoven and Mike Willits bursting through the line. Yeah, nice job just getting the football out to his tight end. You see BC really trying to game up front, bringing a lot of people in Ryan's face. Just a great catch outside by Daniel Franks, the tight end, right over the middle of the football field. Did a great job of reaching back and one-handing that ball for the reception. Markel Blunt was faking a blitz up the middle, actually did come, but what that happened, meant, what that meant was Damon Neely had to handle Willits and Hoven himself. Handoff, James, left side, across the 40, fighting for the 45, down for the 44, and close to another first down for the Canes into Boston College territory. A little deeper, and Edger and James continues to pile up the yards. Yeah, he continues to do what he's done throughout this ball game. Is really pound the Boston College defense and doing a good job either running inside the tackles with power or bouncing it outside as he does there for the first down. 255 yards for James, passing Lorenzo Rohn's mark against East Carolina back in 1980. Moss and Reggie Wayne to the bottom of the screen. Clement, handoff. 
quick feet for Edrin James, but he'll be forced to the outside, a flag down in the middle, and it's holding again, and it might have been Damon Neely. Yeah, it looked like Damon Neely uh, tackled Chris Hoven in the middle of that football field, but no one's been able to handle him. I don't care if it's Ty Wise and Wiener when he was in. Take a look at 95, just bull rush right up the front, and then he gets pulled down, and the umpire right there, right on it. You see him going after his back pocket, and Edrin keeps chugging outside for some positive yardage, but that'll be a holding call. During the run, holding offense. Ten yards, assess at the spot of the foul, seal first down. Mark this one back at the 45, so it's a loss of 12. But really, Miami's doing a good job of taking some time off of that clock. It's down to nine minutes and 10 seconds and counting. They have to continue to move the chains on this drive, but they're doing a good job on the clock as well as that BC defense. So Ryan Clement does have the first down, but he is facing another difficult situation here against a BC defense, which is pressuring him all day. Throw near side, deflected, intended for Carlo Joseph, George White, Cutting to the inside to cover Joseph. Otherwise, he might have had a chance for a pick. I thought I heard a whistle. It looked like Ryan almost started and then stopped again on that play. No whistle, no flag. It brings up a second and long for the Hurricanes. Might have been Krauser sticking a mid up to get that one. And the penalties have hurt Miami. Boston College, remember, early on in the first quarter had their share, which helped the Canes get off to the quick start. That's but right. since then. Now it's second down, and they need to get to the BC 33. Clement, a seven-step drop, pressured from the outside. Forced out of the pocket. Dumps it away. A flag will stay in hand. It looked very close to intentional grounding, but Clement will get away with it. He'll get away with it. He had Edger and James running alongside of him. Eric Stortz, number 51, on the outside pursuing Ryan Clement. That Eagle defense has really put in a lot of pressure, flushing Ryan out of the pocket. That time... He goes to the wide side of the field after play action. He's trying to set up and go downfield. You see the pursuit of that BC Eagle defense. Take a look right here, 51. Stortz, and he just tosses it outside. That really wasn't close, but you have to give him credit. He didn't take the sack. Smart play by Ryan Clement. Right now, it's forget the first down. Just pick up a couple of yards and give Crossland a chance to pin BC deep. Third down, 19 to go. Clement. Dumps it across the middle to Trent Jones. Cuts away from one tackle. Down at the 50-yard line. It ends up being a pickup of six. Well shy of the first down. Now it's up to Andy Crossland to give the Kane some breathing room. You're right. Andy needs to come up big right here. The wind actually has shifted, so he has the wind. They can pin him inside the 10-yard line. Make BC go 90 yards to tie this game. Eight minutes and 17 seconds left to go in the football game. Jermaine Walker averaging close to 20 yards a return so far this season, and he actually ripped one off earlier for close to 30. This one sailing towards the 10. Walker will grab it with a fair catch at the 8-yard line. No return. A 42-yard punt by Andy Crossland, and BC will start this drive inside their 10. Yeah, just with the doctor ordered on that punt. Great kick, great angle by Andy Crossland. Pins him back inside the 10-yard line. BC's going to be forced to go the distance to tie this football game up. 31-24, to 24, Canes lead it. Eight minutes, two seconds left to go in the game. Phil Shane, John Congemi with you from Alumni Stadium here on the campus of Boston College. A gorgeous Boston day. A little chilly for perhaps Miami faithful. Yeah, a little bit. It's The wind's blowing a little bit, and it's getting deep into the uh, fourth quarter. You take a look at the schedule for Boston College. They have to play Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, and Army, and those are... You know, Notre Dame has come back and beat Pittsburgh last week. Pittsburgh, an improving team. And Syracuse looks like they're on their way to turning it around. They've been a hit or miss team. It have been real good or real bad this season. If Boston College can fight their way back to victory here today as the wind continues to blow over the stadium, they close out at Army or against Army. And Army has had their problems taking on Rutgers today, considering how bad the Scarlet Knights are. Uh, they have a chance for victory against the cadets. So Boston College realizes this chance here today against Miami and really just being within seven midway in the fourth quarter has got to be somewhat of a moral victory at that particular point, the way things have gone of late. But if they can come back with a win here today, their bull hopes are not over either. Yeah, you take a look at Butch Davis on the sidelines. He knows how important this victory is to this Miami team. 
they have to finish with five straight victories, not including Arkansas State because that won't count against the Bulls. So they need to win all of their Big East games, the remaining Big East games, starting with this one right here. Now they're in a dogfight right now with 8.02 left to go in this fourth quarter, only up by a touchdown. It's up to that defense to go three and out and get that ball back to the Miami offense. Very key point, and while many people might shudder at the thought of Miami in the Independence Bowl. It's still going to be better than nothing, and with that one double-A victory, they do need to sweep the slate clean to get the minimum six. Hasselbeck coming out under center, and he's actually screaming near side, blowing some warm air into his fingertips as well, trying to get the feeling back. Omari Walker back in the backfield. In motion from the top of the screen is Jermaine Walker, the handoff to Omari Walker across the 10, close to the 11, a pick up a three. Good look at Omari Walker as he breaks free across the 100-yard mark as well, up to 106 on the day. Damian Lewis getting the hit. Surprised that they don't bring in Mike Cloud. Maybe he's injured or, or tired on the sideline, but he's the guy that can really break the game wide open for BC. Not only running it, but catching it out of the backfield. Single setback behind Hasselbeck, and he will use him. Omari Walker with a full head of steam across the 15. Breaks one tackle across the 30 to the 40. He's dragged down there. Finally pulled down by Dwayne Starks. Dennis Scott pinched up. Had him dead to rights within five yards of the line of scrimmage, and he is pulled down. Well, now we'll see Mike Walker, but it's Omari, oh, Mike Cloud, but Omari Walker does a great job of going inside. What a great job he does of breaking tackles, and now he shows he can run with the best of them as well, and he hit at the end of the play. Kind of a cheap shot on the side of Dan Morgan gets blindsided from the right ear hole. He gets knocked to the turf, but BC comes out and gets out of the shadow of their own goal post. They're up to the 44-yard line. Great shot there by the camera. Dennis Scott had him wrapped up to rights, but Eugene Ridgely going for the tackle, knocked him off balance, and that opened the hole. Close to midfield, straight drop back. Hasselback batted down by Fortney. Well, you can see that coming. Denny Fortney had great pressure and great presence on the outside. He knew the back went by him in the flat. He was just waiting to time his jump. He almost caught the football and took it in the end zone. Nice athletic move by Denny Fortney. Right here on the top of your screen, the right side. He sees the back going. He's just in a little tug of war with the offensive right guard, LaRose, and does a nice job of just timing it to get up in the face of the football. Almost catches it and goes in. Omari Walker is back in there, nearing the 140-yard mark on the day. Three century backs today, and in fact, Edrin James, I guess you could say he's gone platinum. Handoff, tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Good effort there by Dan Morgan. Talk about the speed of that linebacking core. You talk about Jeffrey Taylor and Michael Smith, the guys with speed, but Dan Morgan, he was a running back in high school last year. He has great instincts on the defensive side of the ball as well. He's playing, he's starting as a freshman, does a great job of coming from the wide side of the field actually, which was the uh, weak side of the formation, comes in and makes a great tackle. Clock under six and a half to go. Cloud is back in there to the left of Matt Hasselbeck. Hasselbeck looking to pass. Oh, my! Cloud was bumped, didn't even see the ball, and he still almost held on, but Morgan combines on that one with Michael Smith. Fourth down and a punting situation. Nice coverage downfield. It looked like Michael Cloud couldn't get into his route, and Hasselbeck had to deliver the football. It almost looked like Velcro was going to stick to his shoulder pad, but a nice play by the linebacking core of Miami. Malecki with a 50-yarder to his credit already today, standing back at his 30-yard line, and Dwayne Starks at the 15. Low, driven boot over Starks' head. It will bound at the 10 and into the end zone. That one actually rolls through the end zone. It'll go down in the books as a 56-yard punt, but really only 36 net. Strong leg, the accuracy leaving a little bit to be desired. It's 31 to 24, Canes lead it with six to go in the game. Head coach at Boston College. He was the man which helped the University of Virginia put all those numbers up on the board for the past six years. And 
trying to do the same here at BC, but it's been a little harder than he would have liked. Today, though, an impressive performance against the Canes. Clement handing off to the man of the hour. Edron James across the 20, the 25, and spun down at the 27-yard line. Pickup of eight. Yeah, Santana Moss really... What a great block up by the wide receiver coming in, allowing Edron James to get the corner. Take a look at what he puts a hit on George White right here. Whack. Man, he didn't even see him coming. Did a great job from the outside, and that allows Edron James to come outside for a big game. Finally brought down by Shalom Tolfrey, who has been very busy. Yes, he has. Catching up with Edron James today. <laughs> he's, ten, he's got 10 partners out there who have been pretty busy trying to catch him. Double tight formation in motion. Fulcher towards the right. They'll go towards the power. James pitched the hole across the 30, 35, still on his feet out to the 40-yard line. This man is the complete package, and he is just worn out. Yeah, and Bubba Franks, 88, has to learn to keep blocking downfield, not to look where Edron James is going to come from, because if he gets out of the way, Edron just may shoot through that hole. He may still be running. Flashing back to the heydays of O.J. Anderson. Looking at what Daniel Ferguson was able to do with speed. Shipman and their likes. I mean, this guy just has it all. He's got power. He's got speed. He's got great size. And the good thing is he's only a sophomore. Clement, high formation behind him. Joseph at full. James at tail. Hand off James. Pressured from behind. Across the 40 and down to the 41. He should have been grabbed dead to rights behind the line of scrimmage by Markel Blount, and he still turns a positive number out of it. Well, right now, he looks like he's starting to wear down a little bit, and you take a look at that defensive front. Just keep squeezing that down. You thought going to cut it back. We'll do the job holding it on the front side. It's a cutback lane. Greg Mark's trying to prevent the cutback by the, the backs of, you know, BC, Omar, Omari Walker. And they do a good job of going one way towards the tackle and then cutting it, cutting it back to the other side, especially Mike Cloud. So trying to get the backside to stay at home and wait for the cutback. James has gone to the sideline, 276 yards and three touchdowns to his name. Trent Jones in there to grab the handoff. A little bit of miscommunication, had to slow down, reach back. He'll still pick up a yard, but there'll be a third down and long, call it seven. Looks and like a down offense, another yeah. player hurt, Robert Sampson. Started the last game against Florida State. Out there today, and he has been playing very well for his sophomore. And they can ill afford to lose another body on that offensive line. It looks like he's coming out of the ball game, walking off the field. He's limping pretty good on his, on his left side, but still, at least he's walking off the field. It looks like number 74, Mateen, will be back into the ball game at left tackle. Yakub Abdul Mateen. 6'4", 314 pounder out of Brandywine, Maryland. Senior actually had that starting job at the beginning of the season, but perhaps some poor performances coupled with the improvement of sophomore Sampson put him to the sideline, but Sampson's hair cut at the moment, so Mateen is out there. In motion towards the left, Carlo Joseph. Picked off! Boston College forces the turnover as Brooke Heald grabs it, and he's down to the 33. The Eagles with a chance to get back into the lead with 3.28 to go. Wow, just when you don't want a turnover, they force the football down the field. And it's it's a bad time for a turnover. As I said, take a look at 59, Brooke Heald, number, the linebacker. We got him taking a look, trying to bump the tight end, Bubba Frank. He's staring at the quarterback the whole time. He couldn't have, should have been gift wrapped. It was right at his, at his numbers. He, all he had to do was put his hands up. And a good job by Miami. Neely with the tackle, but... Great field position for BC. They've got the football on the Miami 33-yard line. Credit the pressure again by the defensive front. Mike Willits, number 98, trying to force Ryan into a turnover, and he did his job. Chamberlain in at fullback. Hasselbeck will hand it off. And Omari Walker across the 30 and down to the 27-yard line. Pickup of five. This is perhaps the one danger that the University of Miami is facing today. Edron James starting to wear out late in the game. And because Tom O'Brien's been able to keep Omari Walker and Mike Cloud out there, they're still fresh. Yeah, it looks like they're still fresh. And they're alternating. They're bo actually both in the backfield at the same time right now for BC. Walker at full. Cloud dropping out to the near side. Matt Hasselbeck looking up the middle. He had a tight end open. Instead, he hits Walker in the flat. It'll be a short pickup of about three or four yards. It'll be shy of the first down and third down. 
but if he had been looking upfield, he ended up having wide open up the middle, Todd Pollock. Yeah, you're right, and Dan Morgan, the uh, freshman linebacker, puts the hammer on Omari Walker. That's the one improvement I've seen with Dan Morgan from week to week. The first couple of games, you know, he was hitting guys and really not wrapping up. Now he's hitting them, and they know number 44 is there to stay. He's taking them down to the turf. Great job by the freshman linebacker. Third down and one. Eye formation. Handoff. Walker nailed at the line of scrimmage. Dan Morgan just stood him up. Chad Pagui set him down. They did not make the first down if they mark it where it looks. Yeah, he's way short. The offensive line didn't win that battle. Miami wins it up front. BC will take a timeout, but take a look at Chad Pegues, number 94, and Dan Morgan. They do a great job of collectively on that defensive front for stop to stop BC. Boston College has the better of it statistically in the second half, but overall, the Canes running away with it, you might say. Clement has not even really been forced to put the ball in the air at all in the second half. But when it's all said and done with two minutes to go, the Canes only lead by seven. Boston College with a fourth and short. If you're Tom O'Brien, you got to go for it. Yeah, there's no decision right here. You got to go for it and get the first down. You can't kick a field goal. There's a minute 58 left to go in this football game. They need one yard, and it's going to be the toughest yard they've had to achieve all day. Where do you go? Remember the drive earlier this half where Mike Hemmert eventually culminated with a two-yard drive. They fake the handoff. Hemmert rolls out to the flat. He goes to him with the first down, but actually it looked like Scott Dragos was able to break free up the middle. Could have been a score then. Yeah, they went to the short side. They worked the tight end and the back into the flat. And, uh, you know, they just missed a golden opportunity of getting a score. They got the first down, but they needed that touchdown. That would make the score 31-31. So if they're going to throw the football, look for the short side. Butch Davis looks on. Edron James has helped give him the lead, but now it's up to the B to the Miami defense to hold it. The BC faithful believe a seven-point lead for the Canes, less than two minutes to go, a power formation on fourth and one. The game rests here. Hasselback with Walker behind him, fakes the handoff, looking to the flat. He has his tight end pulled down inside the 20. We called the play. Mike Hemmert lining up strong and actually pulls into the flat for the first. Yeah, Phil, that's what we thought they'd do. Go to the short side. They had success against Miami going in the third quarter in the other direction. They come back and hit the same play. Big, big first down. Keeps BC in this ball game with a minute 54 left to go. Good presence of mind by Hemmert. He actually was tripped up at the line but kept his balance. So a first down in the Miami defense. Facing Walker and standing him down inside the 15 of the 14-yard line. Well, the nine-yard gains are down to three, but BC continues to rack up first downs. Yeah, they do, and they need to operate with a little bit more urgency right here, get in and out of the huddle, run a couple more plays. Miami really has to bow their back right now, ball inside the 15-yard line. Don't know if this is a good sign or bad, but the sun is broken out again over Boston. Handoff, cloud, can't get much, maybe a yard. Stood up, Dan Morgan sets him down. Yeah, big stick by the defensive linebacking core that time. Nice job in the middle, Jeffrey Taylor, Michael Smith, Danny Morgan, and a good job by Chad Pegues. He's coming up, mentioning his name a couple more times in this fourth quarter. Buck 10 to go in this one. A field goal will not help. They need the full seven and maybe eight. Double wide out to the bottom, and he's looking for Crittenden. Finds him, in fact, curling across the middle. Going for his big tight end, Todd Pollock, instead, incomplete. And Jeffrey Taylor's learning. In the first quarter, he didn't make that play. In the second quarter, he didn't make that play. But now he's cutting underneath the tight end. He's getting a little bit more Let's accustomed go, to where his drop zone is in the middle of the field instead of out, outside linebacker. Contrary to the two previous fourth downs, which were fourth and one or two, this is going to be fourth and five. What do you do? Well, you got to throw the football. you got to look to the middle of the football field. That's where they've had success. Wideouts left and right. Hasselback under set it. Looking to the middle. Lofting it in. Incomplete. There was a penalty. A bump. And the flag comes down. Scott Dragos was sandwiched at the goal line. The question is, will this be inside the end zone or out? Well, it was definitely outside the end zone, but the Miami defense is arguing that it was uncatchable. Let's see if they reverse this call. Clearly, it was over his head, but there was a collision right by the goal line. Right here, you see the tight end going, coming over the middle. Number 25, Dennis Scott, trying to 
trying to make a collision and trying to tie it up with Scott Dragos. Defense by the wall, the ball will be placed at the two yard line, first and goal. So they say it even was in the end zone. So they put the ball on the two yard line, a bad break, bad timing by the defensive secondary Miami. BC gets the ball with 53 seconds left to go on the two yard line. And again, a collision between Scott and Ridgely cost the Canes. This time Pollock was sandwiched in between them. And Boston, nobody's on the whiteout. Nobody's, oh my goodness. He should have stayed out there, but instead Crittenden rolls to the near side. Time might have run out. Matt Hassel back. He's telling him, why did you go in motion? You, no, you should have just called the snap. It was a touchdown. Just before time ran out and just before they were able to get the snap off, the Hurricanes called timeout. Wow, big timeout by Miami. That's probably the best play in this fourth quarter that defense could have made because that's an easy touchdown. We will keep it here. As the Hurricanes, Chad Pugis comes to the near side looking for some guidance. Both teams have two timeouts, but with 52 seconds left, the Canes aren't thinking about that. Another question right now as we're inside the five, a first down and goal for Boston College as Butch Davis argues with that call, saying the ball was uncatchable on the pass to Pollock, which put us here on the other sideline. Tom O'Brien has got to be thinking. Two points or one, do you send it to overtime or do you go for the win? I don't know. I, I would probably think he's going to go for the win just to, to try to win the football game when they have emotion and they have it on their side. That Anything can happen, though, in the, in the uh, overtime period. First of all, they have to worry about getting the ball into the end zone. I think they're going to have to run the football effectively. They have time to run the football. They have 53 seconds left to go, and they have two timeouts remaining. So they have a lot of time on that two-yard line. On the near side, Edgerin James with 276 yards on his shoulders, but he can only sit and watch. Boston College, two yards away from getting a chance to tie it up or take the lead with less than a minute to go and give credit to Matt Hasselback. The 6'4 senior has stood tall today in the pocket. He really has. He's done a great job leading this BC team. Take a look at the total rushing yards. Now, these are real. Miami has 321 yards rushing. Boston College, 316. The offenses have been spectacular on the ground. Double tight. Hamlet in front of Omari Walker. Hasselback under center. Handoff, Walker. Touchdown, Boston College. Yeah, nice job by Omari Walker punching it in from the two-yard line. That BC offensive line took it upon themselves to say, hey, they're counting on us to get it in. They're calling a running play. Let's win the line of scrimmage. And now it's a 31-30 ball game. We talked about what might be the role here today, two points or not. O'Brien at least appearing to play it safe. Yeah, he's going for the uh, for the one point and the extra point. Try to bring this game into overtime. John Maddich getting set to kick it. Snap good, place good, kick good. We're tied at 31 with 50 seconds to go. The Canes will have a chance to win it in regulation if they want to risk it. Otherwise, think, overtime looms. Well, Miami has three timeouts remaining, a lot of time with 50 seconds left to go. The key will be Boston College has not kicked the football off deep in the Miami end on special teams. Trent Jones needs to have a big return on special teams for Miami. What a game here at Chestnut Hill. A gorgeous day, and it was only fitting that it would end like this one. 31-31. I think Butch Davis is telling Chuck Pagano and that rest of the special teams, if it's a short, high kick, call a fair catch and don't let any time come off the clock. Or if you do take it and it's a deep kick, try to get out of bounds to save some time on the clock. We have three timeouts remaining. All we need is decent field position. Let Ryan operate not in the shadow of his own goalpost. For the most part, Terry Hannafin and George Gaitan have both been chipping the ball rather than blasting it, but Hannafin does have the power to send it into the end zone. He does, and, and that wind actually is really not a factor right now. It's kind of really not a factor, and he should be able to get a good foot on the ball. He hasn't kicked it that deep, though, in the first half. Let's see what he does with this one. On the scoreboard, the fans are the 12th man, and they have been given something to energize themselves about here today by the Eagles who have stood up strong. This one could have been over in the first quarter, but the Canes let the Eagles stick around. 
And now 50 seconds away from overtime. The kick by Hannafin. A chip. Far side. Fair catch caught. No time ticks off. And as you said, they'll give the chance to Ryan Clement. It looked like Dennis Scott might have been able to pick up a couple of yards to the sideline. But I, I just don't agree. If I'm, if I'm Boston College, I go ahead and kick the ball in the end zone or at least try to. You get Miami instant field position on the 33-yard line. I, I just don't agree with the pooch kick. What you have to consider, while George Gaitan is the man with field goals, Andy Crossland has a leg. And this is a guy who might be able to kick a 50-yarder, but that means they have to get inside the 35. Clement back. Four receivers. He picks Fulcher out of the group at the 40-45, close to midfield. 47-yard line. They do get the first down. The clock will stop while they move the chain. Yeah, the clock will stop. They'll have time to reload and call a play if they want to. I think they, I think they did call a timeout. Near side, Daryl Jones called the timeout for the Canes for a little confused and acute confusion there. A little surprising, too, because the clock was going to stop on the first down anyway, and there's the 50-yard long for Crossland. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to have two plays called there, especially having success on first down. Go ahead and, and run another play without wasting a timeout. Because there's a chance you're going to need to use that timeout to get Crossland on the field. That's right. They have one timeout remaining now. The ball's on the 48-yard line, but BC really... They, they can look after this game, and if that field goal does eventually hurt them, they gave Miami at least 15 yards on that kick, an advantage by pooching it instead of just kicking it down the field. 19 yards away from giving Crossland a chance to match his career high. That could be one pass to the tight end across the middle. Most likely, Edrin James's day is done. Trent Jones is in the backfield, a little bit quicker out of the backfield. Yeah, it looked like Edrin had hurt his shoulder as well coming off the sidelines. I saw Dr. Johnny Rebe taking a look, and he was pointing to his shoulder, so that might be the day for Edrin, but what a day he had. Crossland working out on the near side. Has the left foot warm. Now, also, in this situation, you've got Jeff Popovich holding, but you've got Denny Fortney snapping the football. He, you know, he's only been doing it a couple weeks now with the injury to Del Vecchio. So, you know, that's that's crucial too. It has to be three men really executing on the snap, the hold, and the kick. Canes did successfully kick their only field goal of the day so far, but nowhere near as much pressure as there would be if the Canes get a chance. 42 seconds left to go in the fourth. Canes at the 48. First and 10. The thunder raining down from the stands at Alumni Stadium. Flag comes down. Boston College was giving Miami some openings on this near side if they could have gotten them, but the clock will not even stop. Yeah, it looked like Freeman Brown, number 78. In at right tackle. Moving in his set position. Just a, a bad play by the offensive line for Miami. Taking him back five more yards. But you see him there in the two-point stance. Takes a look to his left shoulder and moves his right foot back at the same time. And the officials were all over it. You do not expect that from a fifth-year senior. Five yards further to make up to give Crossland a chance. Clement, seven-step drop. Tucks it under. Push down. He'll be sacked. Time to take a timeout for Miami. No one has signaled. Finally, Jones runs over to the line judge. 31 seconds. But... There it goes took about timeout. five seconds to get that timeout. Yeah, but there goes your timeout after the first down. Miami has no timeouts remaining now. They could have not wasted the one when, the, when they would have got the time to stop the clock anyway with the movement of the chains on the first down. So the one thing you won't, don't want to really give up in that situation is a sack. You almost got to throw that football away. Are we at the point right now, second down, 15, 16 to go for the Canes to get first down? Boston College might think about using their timeouts? Uh, depending on what happens on this play, but I, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens here. If I'm Miami, I've got to take the football and go downfield. I can't afford to hit the tight end now for 10 yards or, or 8 yards over the middle. I've got to take the football down the football field and at least get a first down so you get the clock stop with the movement of the chains. Good look at Ryan Clement. And there's Andy Crossland, who might not even get a chance to play hero today. Or at least it might be delayed until overtime.
Yeah, Andy Crossland's going to need to go ahead and, and get an opportunity, but these big East standings, as we said earlier in, in the Open, Miami needs to go and win all five of their remaining Big East games. They're 0-2 in the conference, Boston College 2-2, two two. so this is a very pivotal game for both of these teams. Virginia Tech, you see, in the conference at 4-0, and everybody else really has a loss, so Miami desperately needs to get on the ledger in the win column in the Big East conference. Ryan Clement. 31 seconds away. They need to get to the BC 33. It is second down. Pressured by Holden. Rolls out. Nice. Slides to the turf at the 42 yard line and with a whimper. Miami will let this one wind to a close. 16 seconds, 15. And you know Tom O'Brien on the far side is thinking about timeout. 11, 10, and most likely that will do it for regulation. Ryan Clement thought he had guided the Canes to victory, but now cruel fate in the form of overtime awaits. Miami has never played in an overtime game. And what a way it would be to lose your fifth straight. The well, pressure is on. Especially when you're in total control of the football game. Phil, that's the bad thing. Miami was dominant, dominant in the first half. I mean, you can't ask any more out of your running game. Ryan was spectacular in the first half, only to be caught in a 31-31 tie. In fact, this is the first Big East game in history to go to the extra session. A couple of teams do have some overtime experience. Pittsburgh against Houston last year, and Syracuse against NC State earlier this season. But we're going to overtime, tied at 31. Can Clement pull a rabbit out of the hat? We'll find out next on Sports Channel Florida. They're doing the coin flip for overtime, and Boston College won it. Most likely, the team in overtime will elect to defer, get second. That way they know what to do. If Miami kicks a field goal, they know they can win it with a touchdown and put the pressure on the Hurricanes. Again, the way overtime works, unlike the NFL, they start at the 25. Treat it just like a regular series from that point. You can, in effect, pick up two first downs if need be. But basically, it's like extra innings. If the Canes do go first, Boston College would then get a chance to match or better whatever they do. Yeah, you get you time, it's two periods. Possession, Miami. Possession, BC. Unless we have a score by the defense. Good luck, gentlemen. Okay. I don't think we could have done any better. Nope, That's a good explanation. Each team gets a timeout, and you see Denny Fortney and, and Starks coming to the sidelines. Miami will have the ball first and try to put some points on the scoreboard. And they'll get it from the 25-yard line. Boston College won the coin toss. Boston College will go on defense first. Boston College will take it first, it sounds like. Yeah, Boston College will get the opportunity to be on defense first. And Miami will go ahead and, and be on offense. That's a good situation. That's an important coin flip because you need to know what you need to match. If Miami goes ahead and kicks a field goal, then you, you know you can score a touchdown and win this game in overtime. So, Or if you have to go for seven, if you make a touchdown, if you want to go for two and try to end it right there and then. So As the referee good. also said, though, if Boston College picks off or picks up a fumble, by the Hurricanes. It could be over if they can return it all right. the way to Defenses the end zone. can score, you're right. Well, this is kind of exciting, I'm ready to go. I've never seen a, a playoff uh, game, especially covering the University of Miami or in, uh, in college football. Quick question before we jump into the drama. Do you like the way this overtime is set up or would you rather see more of an NFL style? No, I kind of like this, you know, it, it, it brings excitement and it adds strategy as well. You know, you just don't go ahead and play another quarter and and really, you know, milk the clock to get it in field goal range and move it to the middle of the field. You have to be aggressive and score and, and really uh, go after it instead of just being a little bit more passive. The one thing I like about it is the fact it doesn't automatically give the team that wins the coin flip the full advantage. You're right. You get a chance to match. If I recall, first overtime game in history was at the Las Vegas Bowl a couple of years ago. Toledo against Nevada. And now the Canes step into the history book. Will it be with a W or an L? At the 25, it's first down and 10 for Ryan Clement. James on the sideline, Trent Jones in the backfield, Reggie Wayne the lone wideout, faking the handoff. 
dumping it to Carlo Joseph in the flat of the 20, 15, 10. He got the first down inside the 10, so it's first and goal Miami. Boy, great patience by Ryan Clement. He was waiting for the corner route to come out on the outside to Reggie Wayne, and nobody picks up Carlo Joseph coming out of the backfield. It'll happen to the right side of your screen. After the play action, you see Carlo just slipping through. Number 59, Heald, was responsible for the fullback. He was blitzing, engaging, meaning if Carlo was going to block, he could blitz. Carlo slips by. Reggie Wayne with a terrific block coming back out of the outside. High formation. This time it's Jones to the bottom of the screen. Handoff. Trent Jones tripped up at the 10 and down to the 9. We talk about Miami's offense. They're missing their main man in the backfield, number 5, Edron James. His shoulder was bothering him towards the end of the of the regulation time. Now you bring in Trent Jones. He looks like he took a tough tackle around the shins. Mondro Fulcher and Daryl Jones will come out as Edge and James. Man, yeah, how painful must that be for him? His left shoulder is hurting him. What a terrific day. 32 rushes, 276 yards, a new Big East record. But he's on the sidelines. He can only watch right now. Wide outs left and right. Santana Moss at the top of the screen. Clement handoff. Trent Jones follows the block at the five. Touchdown, Miami. Wow. Talk about Edron James coming out. Who's going to step up? Give it to the fifth-year senior, Trent Jones, off the right tackle. Terrific blocking up front by Miami. Trent Jones does a great job of getting it in the end zone, and Miami scores first in overtime. What a play for the Hurricanes. It looked like the hole was closing, then out of nowhere might have been. Damon Neely came through to pound it open again. Yeah, it's going to be tough to answer coming back. If you're BC, you got to come back on the 25-yard line. Now, this is very important, getting the extra point. Because remember, if he misses it and BC makes it, it's over. But in no worry, as Crossland does put it through, seven points. Let's take a look back at this hole. Yeah, let's take it uh, at the point of attack. You see Freeman Brown, 78, doing a great job. And then 75 coming outside. A terrific block by the fullback. Also, number 40, Carlo Joseph kicking it out. Damon Neely doing a good job up front as well. But Trent Jones popping it through the hole. He hit it with a lot of acceleration and a lot of speed. Take a look right here. Another look, great up, up front blocking by the Miami offensive line and fullbacks. Damon Neely coming around, pulling outside, and then it's all Trent Jones, number six in for six points. George White, the sophomore safety, the number 40 for Boston College, almost had a grip of Jones, but perhaps a little bit unlike James. The sleight of foot Trent Jones was able to cut back against the grain instead of trying to power over him, and it goes in for the touchdown. That's right. Miami needed to score seven on their opening possession. Force BC to match him right now. They get the ball on the 25-yard line. Remember, BC might be able, if they can get the ball in the end zone, to go for two right. and win it. Yeah, they can win it, but they have to get in and score first, and all the pressure rests on number seven, Hasselbeck Shoulders. He's the senior leadership. He's the quarterback. He's got to pull the trigger and make it happen. BC right now electing to put the ball in the left hash to start their offensive series. Tom O'Brien, you can just hear the roll aids begging at the moment. Hasselbeck, handoff, roll. Oh, my, what a hole. The handoff straight up the middle to Omari Walker. Boy, he hit that with some acceleration. Take a look up front. Offensively, boy, that offensive line of BC just pushing the white shirts back. He just got tripped up coming into the secondary, but a great positive play on first down. And now Butch Davis looking anxiously out onto the field. Tight end is open. They'll hand it off to Walker again. He is slammed to the turf, but he did pick up the first before Jeffrey Taylor could hit him. I have the feeling we may be out here a little while. You know, these offensive really are coming out with rest. The defense is on both sides, really, especially Miami's been on the field quite a long time in the second half. So BC comes out. They move the football inside the 15 to the 13. They've got a first and 10. Dennis Harding split off towards the top of the screen. Mike Wazo also on that side, plowed in motion towards the bottom. Rolling. As Wazo, he dropped it. He dropped it before Dan Morgan could get there. Phil, that's got to be the toughest part of the field to catch the football because the sun, you're looking right into the sun as a receiver, and the ball was put behind him. That could have been an easier an easier catch. He might even score if he leads him outside, but Quazzo has to turn around to try to catch the football and an incompletion by BC. Second down and 10. They can get a first down if they get to the Miami three. 
Shotgun formation, Clouds in the backfield to the left of Hasselbeck. Open in the middle, fakes it, touchdown. tucks it under at the 10, the 5, knocked down, saving a touchdown, Dan Morgan, but it's first and goal, B.C. Boy, nice call. I was thinking in my head it'd be a good time for a quarterback draw because it looked like Miami was really vacating the middle of the field. I wish I would have said it because that's almost what it really ended up to be. He drops back, great coverage by the secondary. Miami he wanted to go to the tight end. He decides, hey, there's nobody there. Let me tuck it under my arm. I'll duck my shoulder to boot. Another 44, Dan Morgan on the tackle for the Canes, but not until they get to the Hurricane one-yard line. Which Davis probably wishes you would have told him. Yeah, I know. Tight formation, double tights. Off the, oh, they moved the right guard, or right tackle. And Danny Fortney just slamming into the tight end, Scott Dragos. And he's perhaps a little lucky he didn't get a flag. Yeah, it looked like the right side of the line. You can just see him. They're down in a three-point stance. Although if you look at that, Fortney had already crossed the line of scrimmage. Unless perhaps it was just a fingertip on the ground. It was very slight. You could see it from up top from where we were. He just moved in his three-point stance just forward and then rocked back. The official was right on it. And that's a good call. And Fortney, the experienced lineman that he is, you would not expect him to jump. Yeah, or make it or make a dumb play by being too physical after the whistle blew. So it was first and goal from the one. They'll move it back close to the six. Crittenden, top of the screen along with Harding. Butch Davis screaming for a timeout. Eye formation behind Hasselback. Handoff. Five, five to the three. Knocked to the turf. It'll be second and goal. I think Butch was talking about some type of illegal substitution or they couldn't call some players that were on the field off the field. Something happened and he didn't, he didn't agree with it. But Leonard Myers, you see there, number 22 in the ball game. He's a true freshman along with Dan Morgan. So they've got their freshman in on defense along with Lewis, and you can go, the list goes on and on. Remember, a field goal does them no good. That's what it is. Butch is upset. They've got too many people breaking the huddle. It's an illegal substitution. Scott Drago sprints off. Passel back under center. Handoff Walker dodges one tackle. Touchdown, B.C. And it's down to the extra point as to whether we'll go to another frame. Yeah, it looks like they're bringing on the uh, extra point team, so they will try, they will attempt an extra point, but great response by BC. They get the football on the 25, Hasselbeck the key, Omari Walker sticks it in on, on the last play for a touchdown, but his big first down run of 11 yards, really another key play in the drive. Sophomore John Maddich out of San Diego, California, lining it up for the extra point. If he makes it, we'll go to round two. If he misses it, the Canes win. Down, up, good. Tied at 38. Everybody watching at home, get back and get a comfortable spot. I'm telling you, we may be here a while. Take a replay of the touchdown. Omari Walker, number 33. Take a look up front, boy, the offensive line. Look at this hole in this cutback. That's exactly what Greg Mark was talking to the defense about earlier in the third and fourth quarter about the cutback. You see number 63, Woody, the center. He does a great job of hooking outside and then just goes through the offensive line. Now Omari Walker has to do is get ahead of steam going north and south. He runs through the tackle of Derek Ham in for the score. Tied at 38. And now, all of a sudden, you take a look at what Omari Walker's been able to do. 165 yards for him on 23 carries. 19 carries, 160 yards for Mike Cloud. And the one-two punching attack of Boston College starting to pay off. Round two upcoming. Bill Shane, John Congemi with you here at Boston College. The Eagles trying to improve their record. Coming in at two and four. Yeah, Butch is upset about the illegal substitution. He's still trying, he's still in the ear of the official, the linesman, trying to tell him that that's illegal. You can't have 12 people break the huddle and then have one guy go out of bounds. Hasselback jogging off the field of play. Trying to get the crowd back into this one. 
They'll swing around to the near side as the Canes get an option. It looks like uh, BC's offense will come on the field first this time. And as you talked about earlier with the pass that almost went for a score, the receivers will not be looking into the sun heading in this direction. 38-38, the first overtime in a Big East game in history. Bill Shane, John Congemi with you as Boston College will get the ball to start round number two of overtime. Fortney, Pugis, Lewis, and Ham. The four men lining up on the defensive line of the University of Miami. Handoff, Walker breaks to it, the 20 to the 15 to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown, Boston College. Wow, BC makes it easy, and Miami just came back from one series. That defense may have been tired. They have to go back onto the football field, and on the first play, Omari Walker takes it 25 yards off right tackle. What a great job of strength and determination to get into the end zone. That puts BC up by six. This should affect the second half of overtime, and Boston College looking like they're going to go for two. I would look for that short side play with the tight end in the flat and the other tight end on the on the deep pylon. It was successful early. Doesn't look like that right now though. They've got wide out spread out. Starting from the three, looking for two. Top of the screen, Crittenden. Heading towards the right, takes out Fortney. Rolling out, Hasselback, he'll throw it. Caught, but out of play. A beautiful catch by Dennis Harding, but Hasselback sent him sailing, and it's out of play, and the Canes have a chance if they can score a touchdown here to win it. You know what? Boston College goes in motion, but he didn't let the motion man clear the line of scrimmage. They only had two men in the line out in the pattern. Crittenden, watch him. The ball snapped early, and he runs right into Denny Fortney. There's only two guys out in the pattern. Miami had six guys in coverage in the back against two. BC has no opportunity to be successful out there. You see all the white jerseys in the end zone. Just a, a, a bad play by BC. A dream come true for Fortney as we take a look at the end of this play. Yeah, almost a great catch. It was a great catch, but he couldn't get a one foot down. That's all you need in college football. He just ran out of real estate. Mentioned a great hit by Four by Crittenden on Fortney, but really it was a bad play by Hasselback as Fortney had the chance to take a receiver out of play. That's right. He didn't let him clear the line of scrimmage. Now Ryan Clement, 25 yards away, a touchdown and an extra point would win it for Miami. Wide outs left and right. Single back, it's Trent Jones at the 33. Clement calling an audible. Man to man marking. A blitz from the far side. Clement underneath the Santana Moss at the 20. Spun out of bounds. The helmet comes flying and it'll be a second down and five. Yeah, Santana Moss with a great catch, but that was a, a bad tackle, really more aggressive tackle than it needed to be. That could have easily been called for a 15-yard personal foul. You see Santana Moss doing a good job, a blitz adjustment to the outside. Ryan Clement throws a nice ball to the outside, but watch his tackle up around his headgear. Yeah, that could have been called for a penalty for sure. All he had to do was ride him out of bounds. Shalom Tolfrey stepping up again from that defensive backfield, so second down and a long five. Watch the corner route on the outside here. Reggie Wayne one-on-one. -on -one. Now they'll drop back. Handoff instead to Jones. Has a hole at the 20 to the 15. It's a first down and goal from the eight-yard line for Miami. Yeah, BC trying to step up their pressure. They went man-to-man -man on the outside. Miami, a good play call to the short side. Just get the first down. Now they've got a fresh set of, uh, set of downs. They can maybe push one into the end zone. The time does not play a role here today. In overtime... It's get the first down or get the score. And a field goal does nothing for Miami's hopes. But because of the missed two-point conversion by Boston College, a chance for Ryan Clement to snag a victory out of this one anyway. He's got two Tim Moss at the bottom. He's got two wide receivers outside, man-to-man. -man. Take a look. Clement looking at Wayne. He now in the middle. Good coverage. Clement near side. He's pressured and he's brought down. Flipping it forward. Intended for the tight end, but they're going to say he's down anyway. Yeah, you can't do that. I mean, you cannot take a sack. you got to throw the football away. And, and on the other side of the football field, it looked like they had a pump and go. 
Reggie Wayne was wide open. I'm not sure if he uh, that was an improvisation by him or that was really the play call, but whatever happened, they're calling Ryan Clement down back at the 22-yard line. Ryan's looking left all the way. I think he just comes off of him a second too early because right now he takes it into the end zone. That's exactly what happened. And then credit BC with great pressure and great downfield coverage. No one open. Mike Willis with a final pressure. It's second down. They need to get to the BC three for a first. Looking across the middle. It's Trent Jones, but he's wrapped up. No gain. BC standing strong on defense, and it's third and long. That pressure's been constant in the second half. It's either been Mike Willits or Chris Hoven. They're doing a good job getting to Ryan Clement and making him throw the football where he does not want to. He wants to push the football down the field. He's got to dump it off to Trent Jones underneath. And a nice tackle that time by number 59, Hale. Two down territory because they need a touchdown. If they can get it here, that's great. Do you throw it underneath? You, you go try for it all twice. Well, you just go through your reads right now. I would take a look at my big target, Bubba Franks, down the middle of the field. The snap under center. Clement looking near side. He has Jones. Touchdown. Oh, touchdown. Yes. Touchdown. Touchdown, Miami. Great throw and a great pattern on the outside by the freshman, Daryl Jones. Just an inside corner route. He hasn't gone to him much, but that could be the biggest play of the game on the outside. A great throw and a great catch by Miami. Now, what about Tom O'Brien's election to go for two? Boy, it's huge now, isn't it? A chance for Andy Crossland to win it with the extra point. It's tied at 44. Boston College, no Miami, will take the timeout. What a play by Daryl Jones. Oh, awesome inside corner route and a great delivery of the football by Ryan Clement. He stays in the pocket, and Daryl Jones had the patience to take it to the post, make the defense of BC bite on the post, and then Ryan throws a strike on the outside. Watch this. He has enough time. Credit the offensive line. He finally has time to step into a throw and throw a rope outside to Daryl Jones for the touchdown. Tolfrey, he was caught on the near side trying to rip somebody's head off Santana Moss a couple plays before. Now he gets burned on the pass, but take a look. Nobody's within five yards of Ryan. He has plenty of time to step up and throw the football, resulting in a Canes touchdown. Give credit to Ryan Clement because he put that one into a location where the only person who could have caught it was Daryl Jones. And for a second, it looked like it was too far towards the sideline, but a great catch by Jones, and he got his feet down. Yeah, and I, I really think it was to the advantage of going into the sun. If he'd had to run that pattern on the other side in that corner, that's a tough corner to catch the ball. We saw that on the last series when Guazzo, the tight end for BC, dropped the football in the flat. So Ryan gets to throw it. He throws a strike. He gets an opportunity to make a play, and this time Miami does make the play. This was a game Miami was running away with in the first half. Boston College fought back valiantly here in half number two. They get scores on both of their possessions in overtime, but they elect to go for two on their second point after attempt. The pass incomplete, and Miami with a chance to win it, but now Boston College will use their timeout. Well, it all starts with Denny Fortney right now. He's the biggest man right now. He needs to get a great snap, toss it back to Popovich, who's holding on, on the uh, all the field goals and extra point attempts, and then it's up to Andy just to chip it through the goalpost. I don't know if he needs to, to really warm up on the sideline. This is something he does in his sleep, and I, it's the biggest play of the game, but... He's just trying to keep his leg warm. Just trying to, all he has to do is just stroke it. It's almost like that three foot putt. You just want to take it back and let it go. And uh, you know, he's probably got some butterflies on the sidelines, but Miami stepped up when they needed to. That's something they haven't done all season long is make the play when they had to. Remember Miami for only the fourth time in the history of the school's program enters week six with a one and four record. Every single time they've done it before, they finished with eight losses but this perhaps a chance for the Canes to turn it back around to the positive. Oh, they have to win this game. There's no question about it. I mean, the season started today. They have to forget about the first five games, even though they won one of those. They have to get, forget about that. They need fivers. They need six in a row to get a chance to go to a bowl game. They'll place it at the 10, so a 20-yard extra point attempt decides victory or round number three. Courtney snap, the place, the kick. 
It's good. The Hurricanes win. The Hurricanes win. 45 to 44 Miami. Wow, in the first overtime game in University of Miami history, they do a great job of coming from behind. Brian Clement to Daryl Jones, and now the extra point by Andy Crossland. That'll do it from Chestnut Hill. It looked like Popovich actually might have bobbled the snap briefly. A strong snap from Denny Fortney, but Popovich got the placement down, and the kick sails through the uprights for Crossland. They shake hands at midfield, but how much must this hurt for Tom O'Brien? Oh, it's huge. How do you decide when you're going to go for two or put it on your defense? Miami, really, he took the gamble saying Miami's not going to score. They come back with a great post corner route and a great throw by Clement to Jones. He takes the gamble and he lost. So Crossland, who was warming up for the long field goal at the end of regulation, only to see the Canes struggle, ends up winning it in overtime with the point after attempt. But give credit, full credit, to Ryan Clement and Daryl Jones for the touchdown which helped them get there. Yeah, and you have to be excited on the sidelines. You're waiting for Andy Crossland. Take a look at Butch Davis and the rest of that sideline. Come on, this is, get in there, please. That a baby. That starts the victory right there. And now they got a string. They need to win five in a row, at least four Big East games to get eligible, put themselves in a position to go to a bowl game. No Canes wide receiver had caught a touchdown pass coming into this game. But today, Reggie Wayne ends up catching one. And the one which helped set up the game winner, a strong performance by Daryl Jones in the corner. Yeah, the wide receivers from Miami, they had 47 receptions among all the wide receivers, zero touchdowns coming into today. So they broke that string right here against Boston College. Thanks for joining us here at Alumni Stadium. You can catch the Canes again on Sports Channel next Saturday at 11.30 when they face off against the Owls of Temple in another Big East matchup. And don't miss sun Sunday morning's playbook on Sports Channel starting the morning off at 8.30 a.m. Bucks Magazine followed by Dolphins Magazine and then the Jimmy Johnson Show at 9.30. At 10, it's an hour and a half of in-depth NFL pregame coverage on Sunday morning NFL. Then we go to Jacksonville at 11.30 for the Tom Coughlin Show beyond the concentration line. That's all right here on Sports Channel. So the first Big East overtime game in history goes the way of Miami. For now, I'm Phil Shane saying goodbye for John Congemi. And once again, the final score from Chestnut Hill, Miami 45, BC 44, the Hurricanes a winner in overtime.